This is Snake. Colonel, can you hear me? Loud and clear. What's the situation, Snake? Looks like the elevator in the back is the only way up. Just as I expected. You'll have to take the elevator to the surface. But make sure nobody sees you. If you need to, contact me by codec. The frequency is 140.85. When you want to use the codec, push the select button. When we need to contact you, the codec will beep. When you hear that noise, press the select button. The codex receiver directly stimulates the small bones of your ear. No one but you will be able to hear it. Got it. Okay, I'm ready to go. Snake, don't forget this is a covert operation. There are lots of bad guys and only one of you. If you're spotted, you'll be surrounded before you know it. If that happens, you're finished. First, go to the elevator in the back. Take it up to the ground floor. Then look for the DARPA chief. Snake, you have to crawl to get through there. First, crouch down by pressing the crawl button, and then use the directional button to crawl in the direction you want. Be careful, though. Crawling is slow, and you can't attack when you're doing it, either. You can stand up by pressing the crawl button again. Snake, don't run over puddles. The splashing sound might alert your enemies. Be careful. Snake, there's an elevator there you can take up to the ground. Get on the elevator. It should take you right to the front of the nuclear weapon disposal facility. Be careful, though. You'll just have to wait for the elevator to come down. You'd better hide somewhere. It's Snake. I'm in front of the disposal facility. Excellent, Snake. Age hasn't slowed you down one bit. Thanks to the VR training I did on board the Discovery. That took a long time. I guess you're feeling a little rusty. Don't worry. It's been a while, but it's all coming back to me. How's that sneaking suit working out? I'm nice and dry, but it's a little hard to move. Bear with it. It's designed to prevent hypothermia. This is Alaska, you know. Take it easy. I'm grateful. If it weren't for your suit and your shot, I would have turned into a popsicle out there. An anti-freezing peptide snake. All of the genome soldiers in this exercise are using it. I see. I'm relieved to hear that. Already tested, huh? By the way, how's the diversionary operation going? Two F-16s just took off from Galena and are headed your way. The terrorist radar should have already picked them up. There are only 18 hours left until their deadline. You've got to hurry. Wow, he must be crazy to fly behind in this kind of weather. Who's that? Oh, sorry. I haven't introduced you two yet. This is Mei Ling. She was assigned to us as our visual and data processing specialist. She designed your codec, as well as your Soliton radar system. Contact her if you have any questions about either of them. <laughs> nice to meet you, Snake. It's an honor to speak to a, a living legend like yourself. What's wrong? Nothing. I just didn't expect a world-class designer of military technology to be so... cute. <laughs> You're just flattering me. No, I'm serious. Well, I know I won't be bored for the next 18 hours. Come on. I can't believe I'm being hit on by the famous Solid Snake. But, uh, I'm surprised. You're very frank for a trained killer. Looks like we both have a lot to learn about each other. Yeah. I'm looking forward to learning about the man behind the legend. But first, let me explain about your Soliton radar system. The bright dot in the middle is you, Snake. The red dots are your enemies, and the blue cone shape represents their field of vision. Be careful, Snake. The genome soldiers have highly developed senses of hearing and vision due to their gene therapy. Make sure you don't let them see you. First, I want you to infiltrate the disposal site and look for the DARPA chief. The DARPA chief was injected with the same GPS transmitting nanomachines as you. He should appear on your radar as a green dot. Get whatever information you can from him about the terrorists. If he's alive, that is. Snake, your radar isn't affected by the weather, but if you're discovered by an enemy, you won't be able to use it. Yes, it gets jammed easily, I'm afraid. Yes, it's all made from currently existing technology. You won't be able to use it in an area with strong harmonic resonance, so be careful. We'll be monitoring your movements by radar, so contact us by codec anytime you want. Got it. I'll call if I'm feeling lonely. Seriously, Snake, we're here to back you up, so call if you need some information or advice. I'm also in charge of your mission data. Contact me if you want me to record your current status. My frequency is 140.96. It's a dedicated frequency for saving data. Don't forget it. Remember, except for your binoculars, you're naked. 
You need to arm yourself with whatever weapons you can find. I remember. First, I'm strip-searched by Dr. Naomi here, and then all my weapons are taken away. Imagine yourself put in that position. Well, if you make it back in one piece, maybe I'll let you do a strip-search on me. I'll hold you to that, Doctor. By the way, sorry to disappoint you, but I did manage to smuggle out my smokes. How did you do that? In my stomach. Thanks to the shot you gave me that suppressed my stomach acids. Cigarettes? How are those going to help you? You never know. If you want to get in, there's the front door. It's the fastest way, but there's too much risk of being spotted by the enemy. I can't just knock on the door and ask them to let me in. Uh, there's one sentry on the left and one on the right. They're armed with five five sixers and pineapples. What about the air duct near the door? There should also be a duct on the second floor. I can't see it from here. I'll let you decide the best COA. I'm counting on you, Snake. Snake, your mission is to infiltrate, not to fight. Don't let the enemy see you. You didn't waste any time in getting spotted, did you? Too bad. Looks like your cover is blown. Proceed with extreme caution. First, you've got to rescue the DARPA chief. Infiltrate the building in front. Look for some way to get in. Snake, they're using a searchlight to sweep the area. Make sure you stay out of the beam. There's no turning back now, Snake. You've got a job to do, and you're our only hope. The world is counting on you. It looks like a cargo truck. They must use it for transporting goods around the base. Snake, why don't you try to hide in the truck? If you disguise yourself as part of the cargo, you might be able to use the truck to get around. Snake, you'll never be able to get through the front door. Find some other way to get in. That base must have some kind of ventilation system to recirculate the air. There should be air ducts around there somewhere. You're not going to believe this, but they shot down the F-16s we were using as a diversion with a Hein D. Then we got a message from Liquid. He said if we try something like that again, he'll launch the nuke. Snake, hurry up and get in there. That Hind will be coming back soon. They must need a lot of power to run the base. There's probably a diesel generator somewhere. And since generating electricity requires oxygen, there must be exhaust openings for that, too. Watch out for that surveillance camera. You can probably jam it temporarily with your chaff. There should be a blind spot underneath that camera. You'll be okay if you stay flat up against the wall. Even though the genome soldiers are strengthened by gene therapy, they still need to sleep. You can move safely while they're napping. The genome soldiers were specially trained so they can enter into a light sleep any time and still remain in attack posture. Be careful not to make noise when you're near them. When they're yawning, their eyes are closed, so they shouldn't be able to see you. Be careful with your timing, and you'll be okay. Good. You've got yourself a weapon. To use it, first hold down the R2 button to enter weapon mode. Then select the weapon you want with the directional button. After you've selected the weapon you want, let go of the R2 button to exit weapon mode. The weapon you selected should appear in your hand. To use the weapon, follow the directions displayed in the window. If you use the R1 button, you can equip your weapon more quickly. While you're barehanded, press the R1 button to equip the last weapon you used. Press the R1 button while you're holding a weapon to be barehanded again. Don't fire your gun needlessly, or you might be discovered. If you had a gun with a suppressor, it would be a different story. If you have any questions about weapons or equipment, you should ask our military analyst, Nastasha. Her frequency is 141.52. Her frequency is 141.52. If you leave a lot of footprints, you can confuse your enemy. But don't let your footprints reveal the direction you went in. Disguise your footprints to fool the enemy. Snake, this is McDonnell Miller. It's been a long time. Master, what are you doing here? I quit being a drill instructor, so I moved out here for some peace and quiet. I'm in retirement, just like you. Once in a while, I still help train the Alaskan scouts. Passing on the skills to a new generation, huh? <laughs> Campbell told me about the situation here. I thought I might be of some use. There's no one I'd rather have in a foxhole than you. Well, I know lots about survival in a harsh environment. I've lived in Alaska longer than you, so call me if you have any questions about the flora or fauna out here. 
My frequency is 141.80. Those mice are Alaskan field mice. Don't worry, they can't hurt you. Wild field mice don't have a thick layer of fat, but they can still survive the bitter winters here without hibernating. They dig tunnels under the snow, and that's where they stay warm. Survival specialists, huh? I should learn from them. But there's a dark side, too. Sometimes, the males will kill and eat offspring that's not their own. To ensure the survival of their own genes, right? Yeah. Pretty brilliant program, huh? If there are mice, that means there must be an exit somewhere. Follow the mice. Press the action button to drop down. Don't make too much noise or you'll be spotted. Be careful when you're walking on that floor. Use the elevator to change floors. There should be a cargo elevator that you can take down somewhere around there. Try to find it. Snake, use the elevator to move from floor to floor. To call the elevator, press the button on the nearby control panel by pressing the action button. The elevator should show up in no time. Snake, first you've got to find the DARPA chief. Look for clues. Snake, didn't you hear that the DARPA chief was moved to a cell in the first floor basement? Use the elevator to change floors. To select the floor you want to go to, use the control panel inside the elevator on the left. Press up or down on the directional button to choose the floor. Then press the action button to confirm or the X button to cancel. Be careful. The elevator won't work in either alert mode or evasion mode. Press up or down on the directional button to choose the floor. Then press the action button to confirm or press the circle button to cancel. Security cameras? Duh. That is the wireless type which transmits visual data to a central security area. If you use chaff, you will be able to disable it. Snake, that floor is designed so that your footsteps echo. Listen, Snake, there's a way to walk so your footsteps won't be heard. I call it stalking. Here's how you do it. First, put your weight on the opposite foot that you're going to step with. Then, take a step so that your heel makes contact with the ground first. Then, as you slowly lower the tip of your foot to the floor, gradually shift your weight onto that foot. Use your knees to maintain the subtle balance. Try it. I... I can't do it. Another way is to wear your socks over your shoes. If you crawl on your stomach, you won't make any noise either. Look at the radar! It's picking up the DARPA chief. He's the green dot. Hurry and rescue him. You found out where the DARPA chief is. With his nanomachine transmitter, he should show up as a green dot on your radar when you get close. Try to find him. Snake, look at your radar. We've picked up the DARPA chief's signal. Can you see the green dot flashing on your radar? That's coming from the transmitter in the chief's body. That's where you'll find him. It looks like the chief is being held in a cell. Find some way to get in there. Hurry up and get him out. Snake, didn't you pick up the DARPA chief's signal in the first floor basement? Snake, that door is protected by a security system. It won't open without the right security card. You can only open the door with a security card that's got the same or higher security clearance than the door. There must be some other way to get in. Take a look around. The best way to do that is to use first-person view mode. Press the first person view button to go into first person view mode. Snake, the DARPA chief's signal is coming from somewhere in that area. Isn't there some place to drop down? Take a look around in first person view mode. Snake, if you want to go up or down a ladder, just press the action button by the ladder. Sorry, the Soliton radar won't work in a narrow space. Too much harmonic resonance. The radio waves produce interference and we can't analyze the topographic data. Try to hang on until you get to a more open space, okay? Naomi, the chief, what happened? I... I don't know. It looked like a heart attack, but... A heart attack? No. Colonel, are you hiding something from me? Absolutely not. Snake, you've got to understand. This op is security level red. You need the highest security clearance to get access to the complete file. You want me to believe that you're in charge of this op, but you don't have complete access to the file? I told you, the Secretary of Defense is in operational control. I'm just here as your support. Snake, we don't have time to debate. Get out of there and find President Baker. Sorry, Snake, but it looks like the rescue was a failure. There's no reason to stay in that cell anymore.
Snake, get out of there and go to the second floor basement. You've got to rescue the president of Armstech, Kenneth Baker, before the terrorists find out his detonation code. The DAPA chief. Poor man. He has a heart attack right after you save him. I'm getting a bad feeling about this, Snake. Maybe you should let me save your mission. You say the DARPA chief is dead? Yeah. According to Naomi, it was a heart attack. It couldn't be. Well, it looks like all you can do now is find Kenneth Baker, the president of Arms Tech. He's in the second floor basement, isn't he? Yeah. On the other side of that wall that was cemented over. Okay. Good luck, Snake. You can do it. Snake, what are you doing? Take care of the bad guys and get the hell out of there. You better use that weapon you found. Try to pick up an enemy's fallen weapon. Naomi, I just had some kind of hallucination. Is it from the nanomachines? No, Snake. The nanomachines are functioning properly. So what was it? It must have been psychometric interference coming from Psychomantis, Foxhound Psychic. Think of it as a mental feedback loop. So that was Mantis. Snake, Psycho Mantis has the power to read people's minds. He got the DARPA chief's detonation code. Hurry up or he'll get Baker's code too. That's right. If the terrorists get Baker's code, they'll be able to launch that nuke anytime they want. Yeah, they'll use Metal Gear to do it. Colonel, did you know they were conducting a military exercise here using Metal Gear? I didn't know. Really? Snake, you've got to understand. I'm just the middleman in this operation. Anyway, hurry up and get to the second floor basement. You've got to save the arms tech president before the terrorists find out his code. It looks like the place is protected by infrared sensors. Somehow you'll have to make it past the beams. Snake, be careful. There are trapdoors near there and the fall will kill you. Stay close up against the wall and you should be okay. You should be able to see where the trapdoors are if you use your thermal goggles. The walls that were cemented over should look slightly different. Look at the walls carefully in first-person view mode. Try to find the walls that have a different pattern. Did you try hitting the wall? Maybe it'll sound different, too. You'll need some kind of explosive to destroy the wall, like C4 or something. Take a good look around the armory. Those C4 explosives you've got should be able to destroy the walls that were cemented over. Good. Looks like it worked. If what the DARPA chief said is true, President Baker should be up ahead. Hurry up and get him out of there. President Baker should be somewhere to the south of where you blasted through the wall. Hurry and save him before the terrorists discover his code. President Baker should be somewhere around there. Hurry up and find him. Snake, there are gun cameras set up there. If they detect you, they'll open fire. Stay out of the camera's field of vision. You could also try to jam them with chaff. Also, you can't use your radar there. Mei Ling says it's because of electronic jamming. If you want to know more, ask her. Snake, you can't use your radar in that area. There's some kind of electronic jamming coming from there. I wonder what it is. Anyway, be careful. Snake, there are gun cameras somewhere around there. They'll open fire automatically if they detect you. Be careful. You should be able to confuse their sensors briefly with your chaff. Get past them while they're disabled. You could also destroy them with your Stinger missiles. If you've got a question about Foxhound, ask Dr. Naomi. Revolver Ocelot is a former member of Spechnads. After the fall of the Soviet Union, he apparently served in the Russian tax police's elite SWAT team. After that, he joined the SVR, the Russian Foreign Intelligence Agency, which was formerly a part of the KGB. But according to my sources, he was dissatisfied with the rigid system of the KGB and wanted to get out. That's when he was recruited by Foxhound. He's a gun fanatic and totally obsessed with cowboy movies and spaghetti westerns. He's also something of a sadist. He learned the most advanced torture techniques while he was with Spetsnaz. Yeah, he had plenty of practice. Lubyanka Prison is located right there inside KGB headquarters. Make sure President Baker doesn't get hurt. If he's killed, it's all over. Try not to cross over that yellow line, or you might set off the explosion. In a gunfight, reloading is usually the most dangerous time. But he loves it. Use that to your advantage. You'll have to take him out when he's reloading. Can you see where his number of remaining bullets is displayed on the screen? Wait for the right moment, and then take him out. You might also try to phase him with a sun grenade. If you get too close to Ocelot, he'll run away and shoot you from a distance, so be careful. 
Don't forget that President Baker is there. He's wrapped up in C4, so don't use any type of explosive near him. He is using a single action on me? The first model of that gun was made in 1873, over 130 years ago. Today, they're still being made in small numbers, but uh, that's just for collectors and such. Nobody uses them in combat anymore. The biggest drawback to revolver-style handguns is reload time. That's your chance. The muzzle velocity of a bullet fired from a revolver is slower than one fired from an automatic. That's bad for you. The slower a gun's muzzle velocity, the more damage it does. That's because the bullet will tend to lodge in the body instead of going right through. Those kind of wounds take a long time to heal. Sometimes they never do. I think that's part of the reason he likes that gun. He's a real sick puppy, that ocelot. The biggest drawback to a revolver is the reload time. That's your chance. Colonel, are you listening? Now he's dead too. I have no idea. Don't lie to me. It looked like another heart attack, but... Some kind of poison? Well, there are lots of drugs that can cause a heart attack in large doses. For example, potassium chloride or dioxides, but we won't be able to tell without doing an autopsy. Damn! Snake, I want you and Meryl to work together. Can I trust her? More than you can trust me. Get in contact with her. Snake, there's a lot of electrical interference coming from there. It should be okay if you do burst transmission like us, but normal transmission is probably impossible. Try moving away from that area. Snake, get a hold of yourself. Naomi, what the hell was that ninja thing? A member of Foxhound? No. Are you sure? Yes, we have no one like that in our unit. Is that right? Snake, I'm counting on you. The DARPA chief and President Baker. So now the terrorists know both detonation codes. Yeah, and on top of that, they both died right in front of my eyes. Snake, now that the terrorists have both detonation codes, the only way to stop a nuclear launch is to either use the detonation code release keys that Merrill's holding, or... Or find the Metal Gear chief engineer that President Baker mentioned, Hal Emmerich. In any case, you should contact Merrill by codec. Wasn't her frequency written on the back of the CD case? First, the DARPA chief, and then President Baker die of a heart attack? Yeah, smells pretty rotten to me. Master, do you know anything? No, but there's definitely something going on. Keep your eyes open out there. Who are you? I was really impressed with the way you busted yourself out of there. The one from the prison? You're the colonel's niece. Meryl, right? No, it's not him. Just exactly who are you? I'm the fool that your uncle sent all alone into the middle of this whole mess. You came by yourself? You think you're some kind of one-man army? You're not even armed. I appreciate your help from before, but I don't need lectures. You're just like your uncle, you know? How do you know my uncle? We go way back. What's your name? My name's not important. Aha! Uh -huh. Could you be Snake? Are you Solid Snake? That's what some people call me. The legendary Solid Snake? You? Sorry about before. I wasn't sure if you were one of the good guys. But I knew you were. How? It's your eyes. My eyes? They're not soldiers' eyes. And they're rookies' eyes, right? No. They're beautiful, compassionate eyes. Oh, just what I'd expect from the legendary Solid Snake. You trying to sweep me off my feet? Don't worry. You'll land back on them once you meet me. The reality is no match for the legend, I'm afraid. Oh, I don't believe that. Why did you look so surprised when you saw my face? Because you look just like him. You mean the terrorist leader, Liquid Snake? Yeah. You know him? You're not brothers, are you? I have no family. So what's the deal, then? Who knows? Why don't you ask him? But first I want some information. You were involved in this exercise from the beginning. What exactly happened here? I'm sorry. I was captured along with President Baker right after the terrorist attack. That's okay. But what is this place? I don't think it's just a nuclear weapons disposal facility. Boy, oh boy, it's just like them. Nobody told you anything, did they? Okay. You see, this place isn't really for disposing nuclear weapons. This base is owned and operated by a dummy corporation of arms tech. This is a civilian base? Right, for the development of Metal Gear. 
Colonel. Foxhound and the Next Generation Special Forces were called here for the test launching of a dummy nuclear warhead. Why Foxhound? Because they're a special ops group used to handling top secret missions. They figured they could help keep it all hush hush. But we must have fired nuclear warheads before. Why just this time? I heard it was because this was to be a final test before the formal adoption of the Metal Gear program. Well, that's what I heard anyway. Uh, sounds kind of fishy. So what do you think the terrorists want? Mm, sorry, I'm not sure. I was captured with President Baker right after the revolt started. Oh yeah, that's when he gave you the detonation code override keys, right? That's right. Amazing you were able to keep him hidden from the guards. Well, women have more hiding places than men. Anyway, you met Baker, huh? How's he holding up? He's dead. What? Heart attack. Same as the DARPA chief. The chief died from a heart attack too? Yeah. Was either of them sick or anything? No, not that I heard of. Well, I don't believe in coincidences. Something funny's going on. Hmm, sounds like it, but I have no idea what. Me neither. Yet. Do you know the person who designed Metal Gear? You mean Dr. Emmerich? Yes. Is he still alive? Probably. He should be in the research lab in the second floor basement of the nuclear warhead storage building to the north. Second floor basement? Yeah, that's where his lab is. I think they're forcing him to work on the nuclear launching program. So they'll need him alive until that's done anyway. Then we better do something before he finishes. You're right. In case we can't override the detonation code in time, I need to ask him how to destroy Metal Gear. You plan to take that thing on by yourself, Snake? It won't be the first time. Ah. <gasps> What's the best way to get to the building where the doctor is being held? There's a cargo door on the first floor of this building that leads to the north. What's the security level of the door there? Five. But it's okay. I've got a level five card. Well, I've got to go save the doctor. You should go. I'm going with you. No way. You're still too green. I want you to hide somewhere. I'm not green. Oh, yes, you are. You pause for just one second in front of your enemy and it's all over. Good luck doesn't last forever. I don't know what happened. I just couldn't pull the trigger right away. I never had any problems in training, but when I thought about my bullets tearing through those soldiers' bodies, I, I hesitated. Shooting at targets and shooting at living, breathing people are different. Ever since I was a little girl, I always dreamed about being a soldier. Every day of my life, I've trained my mind and body for the one day when I could finally see some real action, and now... So what now? You want to quit? I can't quit. I can't allow myself to quit now. Listen, Meryl, everybody feels sick the first time they kill someone. Unfortunately, killing is one of those things that gets easier the more you do it. In a war, all of mankind's worst emotions, worst traits come out. It's easy to forget what a sin is in the middle of a battlefield. But this isn't a war. It's a terrorist action. You're just a little jumpy from the combat high. The adrenaline in your bloodstream is starting to thin out. Just take it easy. But I learned all about combat high at the academy. We'll talk about it later. For now, just think about keeping yourself alive. If I get out of here alive, I'll think about that other stuff. Okay. Let me try to say this another way. Stay the hell out of my way. <laughs> You're a real bastard. Just like my uncle said. Huh. I told you. The real me is no match for the legend. <laughs> it looks like you were right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Snake. I'll be a good girl. We'll link up after I grab the doctor. Then we'll take care of the detonation code override. Gotcha. But listen, I know this area better than you. Call me if you have any questions. Be careful, okay? After I open up the cargo door, I'll contact you. Don't worry, Colonel. Meryl is fine. Thank God. Meryl is a very strong woman. I really respect her. She's got plenty of heart. Thanks, Snake. Not so fast. The real mission is still ahead. Rescuing that Metal Gear engineer is now your primary goal. When Meryl opens up the cargo door, I want you to head north. Snake? Don't be so impatient. Settle down. I need a little more time to get the cargo door open. I'll call you when I get the door open. Just wait a little, okay? Snake, I unlocked the cargo door for you. Thanks.
Where are you? Where I can see ya. Don't move around too much. Don't worry, I'm disguised in this enemy uniform. You won't be for long with the way you walk. What does that mean? Uh, nothing. Listen, Snake, the cargo door is like an airlock. It's equipped with infrared sensors. Be careful. If an intruder is sensed, gas is released. Gas? Okay, so we'll meet at the nuclear warhead storage building. Wait, you said you'd stay put and be a good girl. I changed my mind. Don't get careless. That's when things always turn sour. Sorry, but this is the only way I can figure out whether or not I'm cut out to be a soldier. I gotta get my hands dirty. These guys are professionals. You're gonna get yourself killed. See you there. Meryl contacted you, didn't she? Go through the cargo door in the north part of the hangar. Head for the Warhead storage building. Hmm. It looks like the infrared sensors that were set up here have been switched off. A snake, that room is set with infrared sensors. You should be able to see them if you had some smoke. Oh, uh, cigarette smoke or something. Sorry, but these are smokeless cigarettes. You mean those cigarettes that are designed to cut down on secondhand smoke? Oh, well, don't worry. If you blow the smoke in the direction of the infrared sensors, you should be able to see them. That was a good idea, bringing the cigarettes, but uh, don't smoke too much. Cigarettes make you weak in mind and body. They are bad for you. The cargo door is open already. If you exit there and go north, you'll get to the Warhead storage building where Dr. Emmerich is being held. I'll head there now and wait for you. Hurry after me, okay? Snake, did you lose your way? The cargo door's on the first floor. Snake, where are you going? The Warhead storage building is north. I can't believe it. Solid Snake is lost. I guess it's true. The reality really can't live up to the legend. Be careful, Snake. That airlock is set with infrared sensors. You probably can't see them with your naked eyes, but there are infrared beams coming out of that wall. Touch any one of them and the doors will seal off and the place will be flooded with poison gas. Somehow you've got to get through without setting off those sensors. If you go north from there, you should come to the Warhead storage building. Dr. Emmerich is probably being held there. You've got to save him and find out how to destroy Metal Gear. If you go north from there, you'll eventually come to the Warhead storage building. Dr. Emmerich should be in the laboratory area in the second floor basement. I'll go ahead and wait for you there. Meryl. What? Are you going to tell me to stay back because I'm too green again? Nope. It's your decision. I can't stop you from doing what you want, but... But... Don't do anything stupid, okay? Stupid? Boy, thanks for the great show of confidence. Meryl. Anyway, I'll see you there. Dr. Emmerich should be in the laboratory area in the second floor basement. Snake, be careful. There are Claymore mines around there. Use a mine detector. Who are you? Just call me Deep Throat. Deep Throat? The informant from the Watergate scandal? Never mind about that. You're not using burst transmission. Are you nearby? Listen, there's a tank in front of your position waiting to ambush you. Who are you, anyway? One of your fans. Colonel, I got a codec call from someone outside this operation. I know. We were monitoring the call. Mei-Ling knows everything about the communication system, so let me have her explain it to you. Well, if somebody knows your frequency, they can call you. But the question is, how did he learn it? It's top-secret information. So you mean someone leaked the information? That's the only explanation I can think of. Mei-Ling, do you know where that transmission originated from? I'm sorry. The radio waves were too weak to locate their source, but I'm sure he's near you, somewhere on the base. Master, does the name Deep Throat mean anything to you? Deep Throat? What? You mean the guy from Watergate? No, but he uses the same name. Whoever he is, he's not part of our operation, but he's been giving me advice by Kodak. What? On top of that, he wasn't using burst transmission. It seems he was transmitting from somewhere on this base. Somewhere on the base? Yes. I have no idea who that could be. I see. Mei Ling, how can someone outside of this operation cut into my codec? You're talking about that guy calling himself Deep Throat. We were monitoring from here. What about it? Well, if somebody knows your frequency, they can call you. But the question is, how did he learn it? It's top secret information. Can you tell me where he called from? I'm sorry. The signal is too weak to locate its source. But I'm sure he's near you, somewhere on the base. 
A minefield, huh? You'll need a mine detector. Meryl knows the base like the back of her hand. Why don't you ask her? A minefield, huh? Don't forget to use your mine detector. When you find out where a mine is, crawl forward and try to recover it. Snake, you'll have to go through the minefield to advance. That area is mined? If you only had a mine detector. After you locate the mines on your radar, crawl forward and retrieve them. Anti-personnel mines have killed over 20,000 non-combatants in the past 30 years. In countries like Cambodia and Nicaragua, the killing and maiming of innocent victims continues long after the wars have ended. It is easy to plant mines, you see, but removing them is a different matter. It requires more time and manpower than anyone is willing to invest. The superpowers need to donate more mine detectors and other equipment to remove them. It is the least we could do after laying them. The place is mined? Well, if you use a mine detector, you'll be able to see the mines displayed on your radar. If you need a mine detector, there should be one on the second floor of the tank hangar. Snake, look out for that tank's main gun. It'll pulverize you. There should be some way. Ask Nastasha. She knows everything there is to know about weapon systems. A tank can't operate by itself. It's actually a fairly delicate weapon. Don't worry. You've got at least a fighting chance. Ask Nastasha what she thinks. You can't get to the Warhead storage building unless you beat the tank, Snake. You've got to destroy it. That M1 tank is equipped with advanced Victronics. Once it locks onto a target, it automatically tracks it. And its main gun is effective up to 3,000 meters. To get close, you'll have to confuse its tracking system. Use your chaff. If you can jam the system and get close enough, it won't be able to use its main gun. Use your chaff at a long distance to fool its electronic systems. Even if you can get close, the M1 tank's maximum speed is 45 miles per hour. First, you'll have to slow it down. Go after its caterpillars with C4 or grenades. Once it slows down, toss a grenade in the commander's turret. The M1 has exceptionally strong armor. With your weapons, the only way to beat it is to attack the soldiers inside through the hatch. Try to aim at the upper hatch with your grenades. I think you might be able to fool the tank's electronic systems with a chaff grenade. No matter how good you are, there's no way you can match up against an M1 tank. All you can do is try to take out the person in the driver's seat. With grenades, you should be able to attack the soldier on top of the tank, too. You're incredible, Snake. You single-handedly beat an M1 tank. No big deal. But I'll bet that VR simulator you trained on didn't have any scenarios that put you one-on-one -on -one against a tank, did it? No. But there was no scenario where I had to work alone with a special forces soldier against a group of terrorists, either. In real life, things never go the way you expect them to. Especially on a battlefield. I'm already holed up in the Warhead storage building. It looks like Dr. Emmerich is still fine, but I'm not sure for how much longer. Hurry up this way, okay? He should be in the research lab in the second floor basement of the nuclear Warhead storage building to the north. Snake, you've got to rescue Dr. Emmerich, the Metal Gear engineer. He's probably being held prisoner in the second floor basement of the Warhead storage building. Snake, don't fire your weapon on that floor. Snake, never use your weapon on that floor. I've already programmed the nanomachine so that he won't be able to, Colonel. What? What are you talking about? Have you forgotten? That's where they keep the nuclear warheads. Can't you see them? Yeah, there's lots of boxes piled up here, but are they all warheads? Yes, they're all dismantled warheads. They just leave them here? It's like President Baker said, totally careless. They're working on a limited budget. They try to put on a pretty face for the media, but this is the grim reality of it. Nastasha knows lots more about it than I do. Be careful. You absolutely must not use weapons in that area. All of the warheads in those boxes have had their detonation mechanisms removed, so there's no fear of them exploding. But if the warheads are broken, they might leak plutonium, and that would be a serious problem. Snake, that is a nuclear warhead storage area. Are all these filled with nuclear warheads? Yes, but their detonation mechanisms have been removed. So I don't have to worry about this island turning into a pile of smoking rubble? No, but if the casing is damaged, they may be leaking nuclear materials. Please, make sure you do not use your gun around there. 
Heavy arms fire in that area is strictly prohibited. An explosion could cause nuclear material to leak from one or more of the warheads, and that would be a very serious problem. Please be careful. It looks like they're equipped with gas masks. That's because they're not supposed to use heavy arms. Uh, you mean they use chemical weapons instead? If you use a gas mask, you should be able to survive that gas for a long time. Where is the gas mask? On the second floor basement of that building, so you'll have to go through there without one. Snake, if you walk on that floor normally, it'll make a lot of noise and the enemy will hear you. Try crawling. Snake, watch out. That place is filled with gas. Also, the floor is electrified. First, destroy the high voltage switch. It's the switchboard on the northwest wall. But how? I can't reach it. Use a remote controlled missile. Snake, it's gas. Hold your breath. Your O2 gauge should appear underneath your life gauge. If you don't breathe, the gauge will decrease. When it reaches zero, your life gauge will begin to decrease. The gas that's being dispersed is probably an organic phosphorus-based nerve gas. It destroys the nervous system by interfering with the breakdown of acetylcholine, an important neurotransmitter. And you don't have to breathe it in for it to kill you. It can enter your body through skin contact as well. Victims die within 15 minutes of the onset of symptoms such as nausea, perspiration, convulsions, headache or difficulty with breathing. Your sneaking suit will give you some protection. It's made of a material similar to that which the NBC soldiers use. Also, I injected you with nanomachines that contain PAM, a nerve gas neutralizing agent. But that will only give you temporary protection. You better find a gas mask. Try to find a gas mask. You've got to rescue Dr. Emmerich and find out Metal Gear's weak point. Isn't he being held in the laboratory in the northeast part of the floor you're on? For the time being, let's trust what Deep Throat told us. Use a remote-controlled missile to destroy the switchboard in the northwest section of the Warhead Storage Building's second-floor basement. You did it! You destroyed the switchboard. The electrical current running through the floor should be off now. Make sure your remote-controlled missile doesn't get shot down by those gun cameras. The area is filled with gas. Probably an organophosphate nerve agent like Soman or, or something similar. Well, your sneaking suit gives you some protection. Also, your nanomachines contain anti-BC neutralizing agents, so you should be okay for a short time. But what you really need is a gas mask. An organophosphate nerve agent is a gas which invades an animal's nerves. It was first used as a weapon in World War II, and the casualties resulting from it were tremendous. In its pure form, it is a colorless, odorless gas. That gas was probably colored yellow to make it easier to detect in case of a leak. Dr. Emmerich is probably being held in his lab in the northeast part of that floor. They flooded the area with gas to prevent him from escaping. But there should be a gas mask on that floor too. If you use it, you'll be able to make it through easily. Deep throat? No, I, I don't know anyone who calls himself that. I see. I wonder why he's trying to help you. I have no idea. A trap? Could be, but for the time being, I'll have to trust him. Where are the remote-controlled missiles? I think the remote-controlled missiles are on the first floor basement of the Warhead Storage Building. Snake, that's probably some type of nerve gas. It's extremely lethal. Use a gas mask. What's this pile of corpses? It looks like they were all slashed by some kind of sword. Couldn't be. What? Nothing. Snake, I'm worried about Emmerich. Hurry up and get to him. Snake, be careful. You won't be able to control your missile in an area with electronic jamming. The ninja. What? What? That stealth camouflage. It's him. It must be. Snake, Emmerich's in danger. Hurry and go after him. Snake, hurry. Emmerich's in danger. Snake, you can't use the radar because something's jamming it. And whatever's doing it is very close to you. Be careful. Meryl, what are these holes in the wall for? That's an air cleaner for blowing tiny particles of dust off people's bodies before they enter the lab. Snake, Dr. Emmerich is being held just north of there. Meryl, this pile of corpses, is this your handiwork? No way. I didn't think so. Who could have done that? You got me, but he must be somewhere up ahead. Then I guess you'll just have to go and find out. Hurry, Dr. Emmerich is in danger. If you have a question about members of Foxhound, you should ask Naomi. I'm sorry, but there's no one in Foxhound like that. 
There are currently only six members of Foxhound. Psychomantis, Sniper Wolf, Vulcan Raven, Decoy Octopus, Revolver Ocelot, and finally Liquid Snake. The genome soldiers under his command are next generation special forces. Foxhound is intended to be a small number of highly elite, hand-picked soldiers. You're talking about the current Foxhound, right? Yes. Snake, who or what is that thing? Is he an enemy or not? That's what I'd like to know. Naomi, you really don't have any idea? Maybe I should ask you the same thing. What? Nothing. Forget about it. It looks like your weapons won't work on him. You'll have to think of something else. He's fast. If you lose sight of him, switch to first-person view mode and look for him. Snake, he's obviously trying to provoke you. Throw away your weapon and take him on. Snake, he's obviously trying to provoke you. Snake, you can't use your radar. It's confused by all of the radio interference. That ninja is giving off some kind of electrical energy. Look at him move. He must have some kind of powered exoskeleton. Powered exoskeleton? You mean like prosthetic arms and legs? No. Prosthetics are intended to replace original body parts. That ninja's exoskeleton makes him far stronger than any normal human. He is a true cyborg, a cybernetic organism. So he's half machine, huh? I heard rumors about the experiments, but I had no idea that such a creature really existed. Snake, to save Dr. Emmerich, you must defeat that ninja. Don't give up. Ninja? I've never heard of any member of Foxhound like that. But you're gonna have to do something about him if you want to save Dr. Emmerich. He's just playing with you. Why don't you try throwing away your weapons? Gray Fox. Colonel, that ninja is Gray Fox. No doubt about it. Ridiculous. You of all people should know he died in Zanzibar. No. He should have died, but he didn't. What? It happened before I joined Foxhound's medical staff. They were using a soldier for their gene therapy experiments. I never heard that. It happened right after you retired. My predecessor, Dr. Clark, was in charge. Dr. Clark? Yes. He started the gene therapy project. And where is he now? He was killed in an explosion in his lab two years ago. So what about this soldier? Apparently, for their test subject, they decided to use the body of a soldier who was recovered after the fall of Zanzibar. And that was Gray Fox. But he was already dead. Yes. But they revived him. They fitted him with a prototype exoskeleton and kept him drugged for four years while they experimented on him like a plaything. Today's genome soldiers were born from those experiments. That's the sickest thing I ever heard. They used him to test all sorts of gene therapy techniques. Naomi, why didn't you tell us about this sooner? Because it's confidential information. Is that the only reason? Naomi, what happened to Gray Fox after that? The record says he died in the explosion. I see. But even if that ninja is Gray Fox, the question is, why? From what I could tell, he didn't know who he was. Are you saying that he's just a mindless robot? I'm not sure, but he seems intent on fighting me to the death. We'll meet again. I know it. So you'll fight again? Until you kill him? Huh. I'd rather not. But maybe that's what he wants. Meryl, the engineer's okay. That's a relief. I want you to look after him. Where are you now? Very close. There she is! Over there! <gasps> oh no! Damn, they've spotted me! <laughs> Meryl, what happened? Well, it looks like you've rescued Emmerich for the time being. Yeah, with that stealth camouflage, he should be able to hide safely. Gray Fox. I can't believe it. But the real problem is your niece. The way the codec got cut off like that has me worried. Something must have happened to her. You're worried about Meryl? Not exactly. It's just that she's holding the detonation code override keys. They're our last chance of stopping that nuclear launch. You're a cold man. Your mission is more important than the life of your companions? This is war. Survival is the name of the game. Sometimes you have to be cold to survive. Yes, but... Snake, either way, I want you to find Meryl as soon as possible. I understand. Didn't Meryl say that she's somewhere close by? Why don't you start by searching in that building? Meryl said that she's close by. She's probably in the Warhead Storage Building. 
Why don't you start by looking there? So Meryl's disguised as an enemy soldier, huh? Well, even so, you should be able to spot her if you look close enough. Use either first-person view or corner view mode to get a really close look. You might also try to sneak in by covering yourself with that cardboard box. Snake does an old Chinese saying. A scholar who cherishes the love of comfort is not fit to be deemed a scholar. Einstein said it another way. He said that only a life lived for others is worth living. That's why I entered MIT instead of Princeton or Vassar like my friends. I wanted to do applied physics, not just a theoretical stuff. I wanted to make things for people. The Soliton radar system or the Kodak system. I just wanted to make something that would be useful for people. I think that it was the same for Dr. Emmerich, too. But he was used like a tool. Used to make a horrible killing machine. Maybe it would be better if engineers like us just stop making things. I don't know. No, you're wrong. There's at least one person whose life has gotten better as a result of your inventions. Me. Hmm? Without the codec, I wouldn't be able to talk to you like this. Thanks, Snake. You still haven't found Meryl? Snake, the Warhead storage building that you're in has one floor above ground and two floors below ground. Why don't you search there, too? She said she was nearby, so she may be somewhere in the Warhead storage building. She's dressed like one of the terrorists, but that's just on the outside. The inside hasn't changed. Watch for the way she walks. Snake, she's dressed up like one of the terrorists. She won't be able to reveal herself if other soldiers are around. You'll have to find somewhere you can be alone with her. Even dressed like that, she's all woman. You see? Isn't there somewhere only a woman can go? Colonel, I saw your niece, but... Really? Where? She went in the ladies' bathroom. That's strange. I saw her go in, but now she's nowhere to be found. You'll just have to look in the stalls, I guess. I guess you're right. I'll take him in order. You didn't find Meryl? Why don't you take another look around? Snake, that's a lady's bathroom. I know that. I saw Meryl come in here. So you went in after her? Are you some kind of pervert? I won't let you save your mission now. Listen, Mei Ling, this is the only place on the base that I can talk to Meryl alone. Whatever, weirdo. Don't call me again. Snake, that is a woman's bathroom. You should not be in there. But I saw Meryl go in here. Even so, Snake. This is our only chance to talk alone together. I was sure she was in here. Did you find Meryl? Sort of. I'm positive I saw her come into this bathroom, but... There's only one exit, right? Yeah. Well, then she must still be in there. Is there any place she might be hiding in there? Snake, haven't you found Meryl yet? Meryl must be hiding somewhere in there. Search around. Colonel, your niece is fine. Thank goodness. We can't relax. Not yet. I know. Snake. She's quite a woman. As commander of this operation, I can't ask you to watch after Meryl, but... Duty first? Maybe I was wrong. Sending my own flesh and blood to war. She understands about duty. I know she does. But what I want to know is, what was the real purpose of this military exercise? I don't know. Like I said, I'm nothing more than a middleman. Is this transmission being monitored by the military? Of course. I get it. All the world's a stage and we're merely players, right? Yes. But even players can influence the play. I just hope we can prevent it from having a bad ending. Snake, go with Meryl to the underground base where they're keeping Metal Gear. Colonel, Meryl's acting kind of strange. Maybe she's just feeling a little tired from all the stress. Snake, do you hear something that sounds like a song? Yeah, I do. I started hearing it a little way back. What could it be? Hurry ahead, Snake. The underground base is to the north, isn't it? It's a good thing you hooked up with Meryl. You should have seen the Colonel. He doesn't like to let it show because he's the boss, but he was so happy he could barely contain himself. I'm glad to hear that. You found Meryl. Hrusho. Meryl is acting kind of strange. It could be the stress of battle. I have a friend who had Chechen syndrome. He became depressed six months after returning from Chechnya and took his own life. He was forced to fight people who spoke his own language, people with his own culture. He couldn't live with the guilt of it. It sounds like PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. A lot of veterans returning from Vietnam suffered from that. In fact, many still do. Yes, it is also similar to the Afghan syndrome. In Meryl's case, it is probably a much more short-term condition. Try to cheer her up. She'll come out of it. 
Thank God Meryl's okay. She's a tough one, all right. Although when you look at her, it's hard to imagine how tough. It must be the walk. <laughs> anyway, I'm glad she's okay. I also got a key from her. I think I can use it to stop them from launching a nuke. Get to Metal Gear's underground maintenance base. That's where the detonation code input system is. You managed to link up with Meryl. Good. So now, you must have the card keys that will override the detonation code. You should hurry. The time limit is running out. Snake, Meryl's not herself. Don't use your weapon. It's Psycho Mantis. He's controlling Meryl. That tune is his mind control music. Don't use your weapon. Try to knock her out. I can't see Mantis. Snake, he has mind powers, but he's not a magician. I get it. Stealth camouflage, maybe? Meryl is being controlled by him. My first-person view mode isn't working right. You're seeing what he's seeing. It's a result of his telepathic powers. Maybe you can use that to find him. That Psycho Mantis, former KGB psychic. He has powerful telepathic abilities. After the collapse of the Soviet Union, he came to America looking for a job. He worked with the FBI on several cases as a psychic profiler. Five years ago, he was working on the case of a multiple serial murderer, and he got too far into the killer's mind. As a result, he became just like the killer. So he was sort of infected by this serial murderer's thoughts? In any case, after that he became a sort of psychic spy working for the highest bidder. He traveled all around the world. That's when he was recruited by Foxhound. He can read people's minds. He knows every move that you're going to make. What should I do? I've got no chance of beating him. There must be some way. He's a master at controlling people, Snake. Don't let him manipulate you. Not everything you see with your two eyes is real. Destroying his spirit is more important than destroying his body. Don't let him read you. Be a blank slate, okay? Clear your mind. He read your mind with his psychic abilities. Somehow you've got to get around him. He's using his psychic ability to read your controller's moves. That's how he's evading your attack. You've got to do something so he can't read your controller's moves. Think. There must be some way. I've got it. Use the controller port. Plug your controller into controller port 2. If you do that, he won't be able to read your mind. Snake, is there some reason you can't use controller port 2? Ah, well, it's okay. Do you see something that looks like a statue on both sides of the room? Yeah. You mean those things with their faces all wrapped up in leather bands? Yes. Attack those statues to uncover their faces. Why? Those statues were modeled after Mantis's real face. Mantis despises the sight of his own face. If he suddenly sees his own disfigured face staring at him, it might break his concentration. Snake, if you destroy the faces of those statues, you should be able to disturb Mantis's psychic powers. Meryl is definitely not herself. Could she be drugged? A psychic soldier, yes. Although they will not admit it, many countries have paranormal programs and use psychics in their special ops. Psychics range in power from those who can bend spoons to those who can cause natural disasters. But Psychomantis is one of the most powerful. Be careful. Someone else must be controlling Meryl. Do something, Snake. Save her. What am I supposed to do? I don't even know where he is. He's probably somewhere close by. He's just invisible. How? Stealth camouflage. A technology I developed. Stealth camouflage works by bending the light around the user in such a way that they're rendered nearly invisible. But if you had thermal goggles, you'd be able to see him. Anyway, you can't see him with your naked eyes. But there must be some way to make him show up. Snake, someone's just controlling Meryl's mind. You should be able to save her. Please, Snake, you've got to save her. Meryl's just being controlled. You're an expert at unarmed CQB, right? Stop her without using your gun, that's all. Meryl must have somehow been brainwashed. There should be some way to help her. It's true. Your enemy is a powerful telepath. But you've got more battle experience. You can do it, Snake. Colonel, your niece is going to be okay. Thanks, Snake. I owe you one. Now that Mantis is beaten, Meryl's brainwashing should wear off, right, Naomi? Yes. But why did you go so far out of your way to save her? For Campbell's sake, or maybe it's because you like her? I don't want to see any woman die right in front of me. Oh, really? Since when did anybody's death bother you so much? Naomi, 
It's true that Snake has killed a lot of people, but that doesn't mean he doesn't have a heart. It's okay, Colonel. She's right. It looks like Meryl's okay. Thanks, Snake. Snake, there's no time left. You've got to hurry up and get to the underground base. You should be able to go north from the commander's room. Snake, there's no time left. You've got to hurry up and get to the underground base. To get to the underground base, you've got to go through that cave and use the passageway that leads to the communications tower. Colonel, I lost track of Meryl. If I know Meryl, she's probably waiting for you up ahead somewhere. Snake, isn't Meryl waiting for you? It's rude to keep a lady waiting. Be careful. Wolves have the advantage in the dark. Not only can they see better, but they have a keen sense of smell as well. You'd better use your night vision goggles. Ask Dr. Emmerich where the night vision goggles are. The tongues of dying men enforce attention, like deep harmony. Snake, people don't normally lie with their dying breath. I think he was telling the truth. Maybe you should believe him. Snake, you saw the Tan Radar. I know. I can't use it in a narrow space like this, right? Right. I'm sorry. No reason to apologize. Even the greatest masterpiece has its flaws. A psychic soldier. What a waste. I guess fighting was all he ever knew. Are you feeling sorry for him? Mantis had incredible power. Fantastic power. Maybe that power could have been used to make people happy. It's a sad thing when you see all that power being used just for war. Snake, Metal Gear is in an underground base to the north. Hurry! Snake, don't kill the dogs, please! What are you talking about? If I don't kill them, they'll kill me. But those dogs are just innocent animals! If they were guilty, it'd be okay. But you, you keep dogs, don't you? So what? This is war. My private hobbies have got nothing to do with it. Snake, those dogs! Give me a break. You should use your night vision goggles in dark places. If you want night vision goggles, there's a pair in the lab at the Warhead Storage Building. Psychomantis. What a pathetic man. He was born with all the right tools, but he never knew how to use them. Those are wolf dogs in there. Just like their name, they're a cross between huskies and Alaskan wolves. They were bred to be used as sled dogs. They were trying to create an animal that would combine the gentleness of a dog with the endurance and ferocity of a wolf, but they didn't get the stamina and power they were hoping for. On top of that, their personalities wound up closer to wolves. Most of them won't even let you get close. That's why they never caught on. Ah, oh, that's right. You're a musher. Yeah. And after they outlawed the use of hybrids and dog sled races in 2002, no one even wanted to breed them anymore. I heard that most of them were put to sleep after that. Yes, but some of the wolf dog pups that were thrown away went wild. I've heard that wild wolf dogs hunt in packs just like wolves. Better be careful. Meryl! Damn! Snake, it's a trap. The sniper's trick to lure you out. The sniper's waiting for you to go and help Meryl so he can pick you off. Don't do it. Must be Sniper Wolf, Foxhound's best shooter. Snipers usually work in pairs, but this one's alone, huh? I know her. She can wait for hours, days, or weeks. It doesn't matter to her. She's just watching and waiting for you to expose yourself. Maybe so, but Meryl can't hold out that long. Snake, can you see Wolf from where you are? There's nowhere to hide between here and the tower. She must be on the second floor of the tower. If Wolf is in the communications tower, she can see you perfectly. It's the classic sniper's position. At that distance, you won't be able to hit her with a standard weapon either. You'll need a sniper rifle. Colonel, take it easy. I'm gonna save Meryl, no matter what it takes. Okay. Thanks. What's wrong, Naomi? Nothing. I'm just surprised you're willing to sacrifice yourself. You got the genes of a soldier, not a savior. You trying to say that I'm only interested in saving my own skin? I wouldn't go that far, but... I don't know what the hell my genes look like, and I don't care. I operate on instinct. Like an animal? I'm going to save Meryl. I don't need an excuse. Okay. And I'm not doing it for someone else, either. I'm going to save Meryl for myself. Colonel, don't worry. Snake, thanks. I understand.
I'm sorry. Sniper Wolf is Foxhound's best sharpshooter. Everyone knows that women have more patience than men, but Sniper Wolf can go for a whole week with no sleep, no food, her sights never straying from her target. And on top of that, she takes diazepam so her hands never tremble. Snake, Meryl's in danger. Find a sniper rifle so you can shoot back at Wolf. It's the only way to save Meryl. Snake, what the hell? Are you trying to kill Meryl? You've gone insane? Stop it! You'll kill her! Snake, stop! You're terrible, Snake! No! I can't believe it! Snake has gone insane! Snake, you're a poor excuse for a man! Stay out of her range and shoot at her with a sniper rifle. Yeah, but where can I find a sniper rifle? I can't ask Meryl. What about Dr. Emmerich? He's been on the base for a while. He might know. Ask Dr. Emmerich where there might be a sniper rifle. Didn't you just hear that there's a sniper rifle in the second floor basement of the tank hangar? Go get it and save Meryl. You got a PSG-1. You can use that against Sniper Wolf. Hurry up and save Meryl. The tranquilizer that Wolf is using is diazepam. Diazepam? It's a benzodiazepam-based anti-anxiety drug. It has a strong effect on the central nervous system, and it's often used as a psychotropic drug. So how does it stop your hands from trembling? Anti-anxiety drugs are also effective as muscle relaxants. They're widely used to treat psychosomatic disorders, such as autonomic ataxia or as pre-anesthetics to relax patients before an operation. I see. But be careful. If diazepam is used in large doses over a long period of time, it becomes addictive like alcohol. An adult should take no more than one to four doses per day, with each dose being 0.25 to 0.5 milligrams each. Jeez, you sound like a doctor. I am a scientist. She'll die if you leave her like that. Aren't you going to save her? She's just bait. It's me they want. If I step out there, I'm going to get picked off, and who's going to save Meryl then? I'm hoping that as long as I don't fall for it, they'll leave Meryl alive. So you're just going to leave Meryl there? She's hurt. I know what I'm doing. Meryl understands, too. That's horrible. You're right. It is horrible. But that's war, and the first rule of war is to stay alive. Snake, you cannot win without a sniper rifle. You cannot save the girl either. Find a sniper rifle. It is the only way to save Meryl. Get on your stomach. Fire from the prone position. It would be good if you had a tripod or something stable to balance your weapon on. If you do not have that, hold the weapon firmly under your armpit and keep it still with your chin. Line up your target in your scope's crosshairs. Most soldiers can hit a target at 300 meters. I have a friend who can hit one at 520 meters. To be a good sniper, you must have nerves of steel and lots of patience. Sometimes you have to sit in position for days, barely moving a muscle. The most important thing is to wait for your opportunity and then take it. A slight tremor in your hand can cause you to miss a target 60 meters away by a half a foot or more. Concentrate. Hold your breath and try to stop your hand from moving. The most important thing is to zero your rifle scope. If you do not zero your sight correctly, you will never be able to hit your target. Your sight might be slightly off, so it would be a good idea to try a test shot. If it is off, you will have to take some lead for that when you shoot. Don't worry. This was Sniper Wolf's rifle. Bah. In that case, you had better not mess with it. At a distance of 400 meters, a one degree difference in air temperature will take you about one centimeter off your target. Atmospheric pressure will affect your shot in the same way. That is why you have to aim differently depending on the conditions. Have you ever heard of the Magnus effect? Normally, a rifle bullet rotates and curves slightly to the right. That is called the Magnus effect. Think about Comrade Magnus when you are lining up your crosshairs. Otacon, have you ever seen a sniper rifle anywhere on this base? A sniper rifle? Merrill's been shot by an extremely good sniper. Sniper? A high-quality sniper rifle is the only way I can fight back. I, uh, I saw a PSG-1 in the armory in the second floor basement of the tank hangar. The second floor basement of the tank hangar? I have to go all the way back there? Well, yeah. 
What's wrong with you, Otacon? Uh, nothing. Otacon, where is there a sniper rifle? Well, there's a PSG one in the armory in the second floor basement of the tank hangar. What is it? Wolf, I... I just forget it. The most important tools you need to be a good sniper are the senses that you were born with. No amount of training can change those. If your senses are dull from the beginning, you'll never be a great sniper. According to the SWAT manual, the longest a shooter can stay adequately focused on his target is 15 minutes. After 15 minutes, the observer and the shooter change places. Sniping is usually a two-man job. It looks like your target is stationary. If you've had enough practice, it shouldn't be a difficult shot. The scope of a sniper rifle is extremely powerful. On the other hand, it's got a very narrow field of vision. If you're searching for your enemy's position, it'd be better to use your binoculars. Good job with Wolf. Is Meryl okay? I don't know. I don't see her around. You don't think she's been captured, do you? Could be. Let's ask Wolf. If she's still alive, I'm gonna get some answers. Snake. About Meryl. I'm counting on you. Snake, take the underground passage north. Snake, wouldn't now be a good time to save your mission? You haven't saved your mission in a long time anyway, right? What's going on? I'm not sure. I'm getting a bad feeling. Bad feeling? Something you ate? No, I'm serious. Like a premonition or something. You're as good as ever, Snake. Not only are you an expert at infiltration, but you're a skilled marksman too. But never relax until you confirm a kill with your own two eyes. Snake, are you okay? I've been better. How's Meryl? They've got her. Damn. Snake, the government has decided not to give in to their demands. We're trying to buy some more time. Come on, Colonel. Why don't you stop playing dumb? I'm sorry about Meryl, but I want the lies to end now. What are you talking about? Metal Gear was designed to launch a new type of nuclear warhead, wasn't it? You knew it all along, didn't you? Why did you try to hide it? I'm sorry. Can't tell the grunts, huh? You've changed a lot. Metal Gear? Secret advanced nuclear weapons research? Does the White House know about this? How deep does it go? As far as I know, as of yesterday, the President had not been briefed about the Rex Project. Need to know basis, is that the idea? These are sensitive times. Even subcritical nuclear tests are causing quite a stir. Plausible deniability, huh? Yes. And tomorrow, the President and his Russian counterpart are scheduled to sign the START III Accord. I get it. That's the reason for the deadline. That's right, Snake. And that's why we can't let this terrorist attack go public. We still haven't even ratified START II, or dealt with the issue of TMDs. This has to do with the President's reputation, and America's place as the dominant superpower. So patriotism is your excuse for circumventing the Constitution? Please, Snake. Just stop them. Why should I? Because you're the only one who can. In that case, tell me the truth about this new type of nuclear warhead. I told you before. I don't know the details. I don't believe you. If the situation is so serious, why don't you give in to their demands? Let them have Big Boss's remains. You see... Or is there some reason that you can't do that? Something you haven't told me about? Publicly, the President has been very vocal in his opposition to eugenics experiments. We don't want the existence of the Genome Army to go public. And that's the only reason? Huh. The hell with you. I'm sorry. The corpse of the DARPA chief is lying right here next to me. Poor man. But it's strange. He looks and smells like he's been dead for days. All his blood's been drained out, too. Drained? Maybe to slow down decomposition? I have no idea. But the chief only died a few hours ago, right? Right. But he's already started to decompose. What could it all be about? Something in his blood that they wanted? I doubt it. Just the nanomachines in the transmitter. Did the Chief tell them his detonation code? I'm afraid so. It looks like they've got both codes and are nearly ready to launch. Damn. Is there any way to prevent it? It seems that there's some type of emergency override device that can cancel out the detonation code. 
It's a countermeasure that Armstech installed secretly. You have to unlock it with three special card keys. And where are those keys? I've got one of them. I don't know where the other two are. Besides, I'm locked up here. We've got no choice. Forget about the keys. Your top priority now is to destroy Metal Gear itself. I'm sorry to have to lay it all in your lap, but you're all I've got. Bust out of there and get to the communications tower. Also... What? I know it's asking a lot. Meryl, right? Yeah. I'll save her. Thanks. You okay, Snake? Yeah. Nothing new to report. Snake, is there anything I can do? Yeah. My arm hurts. Poor Snake. I'll increase the level of painkillers in your blood. Okay, but you can leave out the Benzedrine. That stuff makes me too frisky. <laughs> I guess you're not feeling too bad after all. Snake, put the controller up against your arm. What? Don't worry. It'll feel good. Huh? Okay, here I go. Oh. How does that feel, Snake? A little better? How did you do that? I stimulated your muscle fibers with the nanomachine cilia. That's about all I can do for you. Naomi, please talk to me. Say something to take my mind off the pain. What can I say? Anything. I... I'm not a very good talker. Please. Tell me about yourself. Myself? That's a tough one. Any family? <sighs> That's not a happy topic for me. I don't have any family. No. Wait. There was a man who said he was my father. Where is he? Dead. By my own hand. Big Boss. What? Big Boss? I had no idea. There was no way you could. It happened in Zanzibar six years ago. Only Snake and I know the real truth of what happened there. So, is it true? Was Big Boss really your father? That's what he said. That's all I know. And you were able to kill him, knowing that? Yep. How? He wanted it. Besides, some people just need killing. That's patricide. Yep. That's the drama that Mantis was talking about. The one we share in common. Is that why you left Foxhound? Let's just say that I needed to be alone for a while, and Alaska was the perfect place. <sighs> Snake. I didn't have a real family either. Just a big brother who put me through school. We weren't even blood-related, and he was much older than me. Where is he? He's dead. I'm sorry. Snake, is there a woman in your life? After you've been through as many wars as me, it's hard to trust anyone. Hmm. Friends? Roy Campbell. <sighs> You're still calling me friend? Is that it? No. There was another. Frank Yeager. What? Big Boss's most trusted lieutenant. And the only member of Foxhound ever to receive the code name Fox. Gray Fox. I learned a lot from him. But... didn't you try to kill each other? That's true. We did. In Zanzibar. But it was nothing personal. We were just professionals on opposite sides, that's all. And you still call yourself friends? Hard to believe. War is no reason to end a friendship. That's insane. I first met him on the battlefield. He was being held a prisoner of outer heaven, but he didn't look like a prisoner to me. He was always so cool and precise. I was still green, and he showed me the ropes. You knew him well? No. We never talked about our personal lives. Sort of an unwritten rule. The next time I saw him on the battlefield, we were enemies. We were fighting barehanded in a minefield. I know it sounds strange to most people, but we were just two soldiers doing our jobs. It's like a sport. Men in their games. You're like wild animals. You're right. We are animals. So if you were friends, then how do you explain the ninja's behavior? I don't know. 
It's your genes. They make you predisposed towards violence. You really like talking about genes, Naomi. Why did you get into genetic research anyway? I never knew who my parents were, or even what they looked like. I guess I got into genetics because I wanted to figure out why I am the way I am. So you studied about DNA? <laughs> yeah. I thought if I studied my genetic structure, I'd find out who I really was. I thought that by analyzing a person's genetic information, I could retrieve the blank spots in that person's memory. Memory is stored in DNA? We're not sure, but we know that a person's genetic fate is determined just by the sequence of the four bases in their DNA. So what about my fate? You know my DNA sequence, don't you? Your fate? I've... I'm sorry, I have no idea. Of course not. You're a scientist, not a fortune teller. Snake, don't worry. You'll have a chance to escape. Hang on. The guard is only human. He has to sleep and go to the bathroom like the rest of us. That'll be your chance. Snake, that's a prison cell. You can't open the door from the inside. Somehow, you'll have to get the key off the guard. Yeah, but how? Why don't you try disappearing? The ketchup. You might be able to trick the guard if you use it right. Snake, why don't you use the ketchup and pretend that you're dead? Snake, are you okay? I feel so scared for you. It must be horrible. Yeah, I, I've been through a lot worse. Believe me. Wow, you really are a hero. It's a good thing the codec is connected directly to your inner ear. You can contact us anytime. It's always nice to hear that you're alright. Why don't you contact the Colonel? If anyone can think of a way out, it's him. Mei Ling, you must think I'm garbage. Snake, don't blame yourself too much. You just... I just let them kill Meryl to save my own worthless hide. Listen, in China they have a saying. Um, uh, forget it. I'll use my own words this time. Cheer up, Snake. Don't listen to what he said. It's nothing but a bluff. I'm sure about that. I don't think he's the bluffing type. But Snake, you have a job to do. Pull yourself together for the world's sake. First, you've got to figure out how to get out of there. Snake, listen to me. You... You've got to pull yourself together and get back to work. You're right. I've sat here feeling sorry for myself long enough. Thanks, Mei Ling. Just because you are locked up does not mean there is no chance of escape. Keep your eyes and ears open, and when you see a chance, take it. You should call Campbell and wait for his instructions. Snake, do you like the atmosphere there or something? Hurry up and escape. Otacon. Are you still okay? Yeah. Thanks to the stealth camouflage, that is. I have a favor to ask. I need your help. I was wondering when you'd ask. What should I do? I've been captured. I'm locked up here in this cell. What cell? Uh, there's a big torture machine nearby. Okay. I know it. It's close. I'll be there right away. Thanks. Otacon. I'm headed your way now. Can't you just relax? I am relaxed. I just don't know how to kill time here. Okay. I'll be there as soon as I can. What are you using the codec for? I'm right here. Did you use the ketchup? It took me a long time to find that. It's exactly the right color and consistency, too. Use it wisely, okay? That's all I can do for you, Snake. What are you doing? Now's your chance to get out of there, Snake. Normally, when a soldier is taken prisoner, he should only give up the big four. That's name, rank, serial number, and date of birth. But you're not any old soldier, Snake. I don't want you to tell them anything. Fortunately, you're strong enough to resist. Don't say anything to tease or anger the person torturing you. If you make him mad, it'll be that much worse for you. You'll need to save your strength. If you get a chance to eat, don't pass it up. A prisoner can't be choosy. You need to get your strength back so you can escape when the opportunity presents itself. Snake, you'll get a chance to escape. Make sure you take it. Master, I... Don't say it, Snake. You still have a mission to accomplish. That's all you should be concentrating on right now. In any case, don't you think you should contact Colonel Campbell? Great job with the guard, Snake. Now's your chance to escape. I plan on it. Next time I meet Ocelot, it's gonna be on my terms. How do you feel, Snake? Can you go on? Yeah, don't worry. That sadist can't keep me down.
I don't know how, but the door is open. I saw the silhouette of someone in stealth camis. Stealth camouflage? Could it be Emmerich? No. I don't think it was Otacon. So who then? You don't think it could be Gray Fox? Yeah, I do. I think it was. You saying that he came to save his friend? Could be. Or maybe he just doesn't want me to die in a prison cell. I don't know. I can't imagine what he could be thinking. Snake, you can worry about it later. Now's the time to escape. Snake, now's your chance to escape. Snake, wait a minute. You forgot to take your items. They're probably being kept somewhere close by. Snake, be careful. They've set up new gun cameras and increased their patrols. They don't want you to get away. You can either destroy them with a grenade or jam them with your chaff. You won't be able to get on the elevator unless you disable those gun cameras. First, you've got to retrieve your items. Snake, there's a bomb planted in your items. Hurry, throw it away! Who the hell are you? One of them? You'll find out soon enough. Snake, get that bomb out of your items. Select the bomb in the equipment window and press the circle button to throw it away. Hurry, throw it away! That was a close one, Snake. Ocelot, you'll pay for that. That Deep Throat's a real enigma. He's definitely from inside their ranks. Is he an informer? Maybe some kind of renegade? I've got the feeling there's some other force at work here. To get to the underground base where Metal Gear is, you'll have to climb the communications tower on the north side of the cave. Wait a minute, Snake. You're in an armory. Why don't you load up on ammo? What about your equipment? You are not going to leave behind everything you've collected, are you? Hurry, grab your stuff. Snake, hurry to the communications tower. That was a close one. I did not think they would go so far as to booby trap your equipment. Sneaky bastards. Otacon, are you there? What is it? Was that you who opened the door just now? What are you talking about? So it wasn't you, which means that... The door is open, right? You've got to get out of there now! You're right. If you're looking for your items, they're near where you were being tortured. Why don't you go get them? If you knew that, why didn't you just bring them to me? The guard was scary. So you figured out what I had in mind, huh? I can't believe it actually worked. Looks like you escaped. I'm glad. No thanks to you. Too bad. I thought you'd be able to figure out what my plan was. What are you talking about? I was just lucky that security was careless. If you go straight down the underground passageway north of the cave, you'll arrive at the communication towers. You should be able to go over the glacier by using the communication tower's walkway. Head for the towers! Snake, now's your chance. Take it. Get out of there! Snake, what happened to your items? You're not gonna try to finish this mission barehanded, are you? Get your items. Now that you've got your stuff back, you should take a good look through it. If you're slow equipping an item in battle, it could mean death. That was too close, Snake. Yeah, that was quite a surprise, all right. Hiding a bomb in your items. That's a despicable act. He should never... Well, forget it. You'd better hurry to the underground base. You're almost out of time. The wolf dogs aren't attacking? Are you carrying something that might be causing them to act like that? Snake, Naomi wants to talk to you. How do you feel, Snake? Well, to tell you the truth, I think I'm catching a cold. I'm monitoring you via the nanomachines. Your body temperature is elevated and your lymph nodes are slightly swollen. But don't worry, it appears to be just a mild rhinovirus. Yeah, I guess I got it from that soldier. I've increased your nutrition and elevated your blood sugar level. You can't cure it? Sorry, Snake. The nanomachines don't carry antibiotics. Maybe you could find some garlic. It contains natural antibiotics, you know. Vitamins and minerals, too. Ugh. Raw garlic. Give me a break. There must be some cold medicine somewhere on the base. That would make you feel better. If not, you'll just have to wait until your body's natural defenses take over. Oh, he's a limb that has but a disease. Mortal to cut it off. To cure it, easy. Snake, you caught a cold, didn't you? Don't you think you'd better take some cold medicine at least? Snake, this sickness doth infect the very lifeblood of our enterprise. That's from Henry IV. 
Snake, you'd better take that cold medicine and start feeling better. The success of this mission may depend on it. Sounds like you have a bad cold. You had better try to shake it off. Is there any cold medicine on this base? What's wrong, Snake? You caught a cold? I think there's some in the commander's room. There's a pharmaceutical storage room in the southwest of the first floor basement of the Warhead Storage Building. There are other types of drugs there, too. I gave directions to another soldier who'd caught a cold. Well, it looks like he gave the call to me. You caught a cold, Snake? In battle, you need to be in top physical condition. Do you have any cold medicine? Snake, about Merrill. Colonel, I'm sorry. Listen to me. I wasn't able to protect her. Snake, it's okay. You did what you could. Now, let it rest. Colonel, Snake, she's a soldier. She knows that prisoners are a part of war. She was a soldier. She knew the risks. Battlefield casualties are always tragic, but they're an unavoidable part of war. She joined up of her own free will. I'm sure she was prepared for this. No. You're wrong. Meryl thought she had to become a soldier. Thought it was the only way. She said she thought it would bring her closer to her dead father. She said that? She wasn't ready for real combat. I shouldn't have pushed her so hard. It's all my fault. It's not like you, Snake. Master, what is it? Sorry for eavesdropping, but I just couldn't listen anymore. Master. Snake, you can have regrets if you want to. It's only natural. But you can't keep attacking yourself for things that happened in the past. That road leads to madness. Believe me. He's right. Don't kick yourself. It doesn't suit a legend like you. And besides that, for all we know, Meryl's okay, right? I'm sure Meryl's just fine. Mei Ling. Snake, forget about Meryl. Stop Liquid. That's what Meryl would want, too. You're right. Meryl would say the same thing. Snake. What? Meryl. She's pretty special to you, huh? Yes, she's special. There aren't many women like her around. That's not what I meant. She's the Colonel's niece and a combat buddy. Is that all? Come on. This is like a police interrogation. No, I just... I guess it's in the genes. The genes? What are you talking about, Colonel? <laughs> no, I just remembered about Naomi's grandfather. I think Naomi said he rose as high as assistant secretary in the FBI during Edgar Hoover's time. Is that right? Yes. Yes, uh, he was uh, Japanese, and he became a special undercover investigator to nab the Mafia. When was that? Oh, uh, sometime in the 50s, I guess. Where? Uh, New York, I think. Naomi, I thought you didn't have any family. Well, I, I researched it after I became an adult. My grandfather was already dead by the time I learned about him. I never even had the chance to meet him. Oh. Snake, good luck. Watch your back, Snake. Snake, the launch deadline for the new nuclear warhead is almost here. Hurry and get to Metal Gear's underground maintenance base. The overland route is blocked by a glacier. Climb the communications tower so you can go over it. The communications tower consists of Tower A and Tower B. You're in Tower A now. To get to Tower B, you'll have to use the outside walkway. Remember, Snake, dark places are dangerous places. You can't see where your enemies are coming from. Please, use your night vision goggles or your thermal goggles. The walkway door won't open, huh? Snake, you'll have to use the walkway on the roof. Climb up there. Huh, that's easy for you to say. Use your throw move on the bad guys that are chasing you. Grenades might work well, too. To get the grenade to explode near the soldiers, pull the pin and hold on to it for four seconds before you throw it. Yeah, any ideas? Why don't you ask Dr. Emmerich? Wait a minute, Snake. According to these satellite photos that Mei Ling got, it looks as if there's a walkway on the roof as well. You can take that to the other side, too. Be careful, Snake. Whew. I made it to the roof. You must be exhausted, Snake. <sighs> there was no big deal. Snake, I'm monitoring you closely. Your heart rate is elevated and your breathing is shallow. 
What's the matter, Snake? You out of shape from all that dog mushing? The walkway should be right in front of you. Cross it to get to Tower B. Then climb down and proceed north. Where are you going, Snake? Hurry and take the walkway on the roof to the B Tower. If the remote-controlled missile goes too far away, you'll lose control over it. Be careful. When you are in a dark place, you should use night vision or thermal goggles. Snake, it's dark inside the communication towers. You should use your night vision or thermal goggles. If you want thermal goggles, there's a pair on the same floor as my lab. There's a pair of night vision goggles near my lab. Be careful! There are always a lot of soldiers guarding the communication tower. The walkway is directly between the communications towers. Head for there! Snake, that's the door to the walkway. It won't open, even if I use the card. Huh? Oh, that's right, I totally forgot! Do you know something? That door sometimes gets frozen shut because it's so cold outside. Next time, tell me beforehand. So what should I do? It's impossible to open from the inside. They always used C4 or something from the outside. From the outside? You can't open it from the inside? Sorry, it's impossible. But don't worry, you'll get through. There are two walkways that connect Tower A and Tower B. The other one's on the roof. You should just use the walkway on the roof. Snake, there's a walkway up on the roof, too. You should use that one. Otacon, I'm up on the roof. That was a pretty fast climb. I wanted to go slowly, but someone there forced me to move faster. Oh. Well, you can relax, because there's an elevator in Tower B. That walkway will take you to Tower B. Snake, the walkway is on the roof of Tower A. The walkway on the roof of Tower A was destroyed? Uh, that doesn't mean there's no other way. Is there a rope or something around there? If you had a rope, you could repel from the roof of Tower A down to the walkway below. You're an expert at repelling, aren't you? You'll have to go to the north part of Tower A and use that rope to repel down to the walkway below. It's too dangerous. That hind is aiming at Snake, and he'll need to use both hands to repel, too. You're right, but we have no choice. The hind can't move in tight spaces. It's our best bet. <sighs> this is insane. The Colonel's right. There's no other way. To beat that hind, you need a SAM, a surface-to-air missile. You cannot shoot it down with just small arms fire. If only you had a stinger. It's no good, Snake. It looks like that door is frozen shut. The only way to open it is to blow it open from the outside. And since the walkway on the roof is destroyed, to get to Tower B, you'll have to take the walkway on the other side of that door. If you had a rope, maybe you could lower yourself from the roof of Tower A to the other side. Snake, are you going to take on a hind with your bare hands? I'm not that big a fool. Isn't there a weapon I can use against him somewhere? There are Stinger missiles in Communications Tower B. I'm pretty sure they're near the entrance to the walkway. If you had a rope, you could probably get them by dropping down from the roof. I saw a rope on the bottom floor of Tower A. Here's how to repel. Press the X button to jump away from the wall. While you're away from the wall, press down on the directional button to drop down. If you jump while pressing right or left on the directional button, you can make a big jump in that direction. If you press and hold the circle button while using the directional button, you can walk slowly across the wall. If you're careful with the timing, you should be able to dodge the gunfire from the hind while you rappel down. If anyone can do it, you can, Snake. Wow, Snake! You're like an action movie star! Totally different. Huh? This is real, not some prearranged stunt. If I screw up, there are no retakes. Yeah, I guess you're right. Snake, there are some places on the wall where steam from the heating system is spurting out. So be careful, it'll give you a nasty burn. I made it to the bottom. Thank God you're okay. I was terrified just watching you. You're incredible, Snake. Snake, why don't you try the door that leads from the walkway to Tower A? Snake, you're under attack from off-screen. What should I do? First, find out where the enemy is. Use your binoculars. Then attack with a PSG-1 or remote-controlled missile. Something with a longer range than an ordinary weapon. Snake, the hind is still circling above the communications tower. Damn, there's no weapon here that I can use to take him on. Dr. Emmerich might know where there's a weapon you could use against the hind. Why don't you ask him? 
Snake, hurry up and get those Stinger missiles. Didn't Emmerich say they're near the entrance to the walkway in Tower B? The way to the top is blocked, huh? Well, we can worry about that later. Why don't you go and see what's happening below? The staircase is broken. Uh, tough luck. Looks like the elevator's the only way up now. Okay, Snake, I want you to head up there right away. It looks like Liquid really wants to have a showdown with you. I'm looking at Mei Ling's digitally enhanced satellite images right now. Snake, he's waiting for you. He's just circling around like a buzzard. I hope everyone's enjoying the live broadcast. Sorry, Snake. I wish I could do something to help. Snake, I don't like it. Please don't go up to the roof. I have to. I can't run from this one. Liquid is waiting for you up on the roof. Liquid is still hovering around the roof of Tower B. He's waiting for you. Snake, it's time for you to take him on. The hind is still around. You'll need a surface-to-air missile to take him on, uh, like a stinger or, or something. You're under long-distance attack. Shoot back with your sniper rifle. You found stinger missiles. Great. They're equipped with a thermal homing device, so once they've locked on, they will automatically pursue the target. To lock on, all you have to do is line up the crosshairs. Stingers are very potent, short-range, low-altitude SAMs. In Afghanistan, the Mujahideen shot down hundreds of Soviet aircraft with them. In fact, they were forced to change their tactics. One of my favorite horror books is called Stinger. And my favorite cocktail is a stinger. I guess you could say I've got a thing for stingers. Uh, you have stinger missiles. Now you have at least got a chance against the hind. Only a chance? Well, you are not exactly evenly armed. That hind is a monster. You have only a small chance to win, but at least it's better than no chance. That's a pretty grim analysis, Nastasha. To shoot down that hind, you will have to get to a place with good visibility. Do not try to fight him in that walkway. Get up on that roof where you will have a clean shot at him. Great job! You made it down! It wasn't easy. No problem. Maybe now would be a good time to blow that door open with some C4 so you can get through later. Snake, the doorway that leads from the walkway to Tower A is frozen shut. If you use some C4, you should be able to get through. You're getting shot at? But to get where the Stinger missiles are, you have to make it down that walkway. The Stinger missiles are in a small room near the entrance to the walkway. Snake, I'm heading your way. What are you talking about? There's something I've got to ask you. Well, what is it? Um, well, you see, I... Oh, I'll ask you when I see you. Bye. Wait a minute. Snake, I'm coming out there. Just hold on, okay? You're gonna go after that hind now? Yeah. I can still hear the sound of its rotors. It's just circling the tower. He must be waiting for you. Yeah, well, you won't hear it for much longer. Good. In the meantime, I'll fix the elevator so you can use it later. I'll repair the elevator while you're fighting that hind. It might take some time, so don't hurry. Liquid means to bring this to an end now. He obviously planned this. Maybe the broken elevator was all part of the trap. You mean he fiddled with the elevator to get me out on the roof? You'll have to destroy that hind, Snake. You can see the hind on your radar screen. Even if you lose visual contact, you can always check his position by radar. Use your ears, Snake. You should be able to tell where he's coming from by the sound of his rotor blades. Huh? Snake, you're not using a stereo TV? It can't be. A mono TV? Hmm. Well, Colonel, there's nothing we can do about it. I guess you're right. Snake, don't worry about it. There's more to being a good person than just having a stereo television. You can do it just the way you are. A mono TV. Your best chance is to hit him while he is circling. When his nose isn't pointed at you, that is your opening. Shove a stinger missile up his butt. That machine gun can rip you to shreds in seconds. When it is facing in your direction, you'd better hide in the shadows up there. You cannot move while operating your stinger missile. Focus your sights on that bird as soon as it shows its tail. When its gun turret is aimed at you quickly, hide in the shadows. Use your R1 button effectively. That hind is equipped with infrared and night vision equipment. It can fly even in pitch darkness. But there's one thing. Only 
a handful of pilots in the world could operate a hind in a blizzard like this. The IR and night vision equipment would be useless. He must be flying on manual. That means your chaff won't work. Snake, are you okay? So far, how are you doing? Sorry, the elevator's not working yet. It's strange, there's no problem with the motor and the power is on. I need a little more time. Snake, the elevator's working. You fixed it? No, that's the weird thing. It just moved by itself. It's headed your way now. Is that so? Okay. That explosion before, what was it? Oh, I had to take out that helicopter. Helicopter? That's incredible, Snake. Listen, I just want to make sure again. This is the way to get to where Metal Gear is being stored? Yeah. The entrance to the underground maintenance base is towards the back of the snowfield ahead. Okay. Find a safe place to hide out for a while. I'm going underground. I know, I know. You don't have to tell me. And stay out of my way. Don't try to be a hero or anything. Okay. Call me if you need to. You did it, Snake. You shot down the hind. I was so worried. Liquid couldn't have survived that. I wonder. But even so, just because we've taken out their leader doesn't mean they're going to give up. They're still going to try to launch that nuke. You're right. There's no time to waste. Hurry, the underground base is past the communications tower. The elevator's working again, isn't it? My god, you actually shot down that hind. You're the one who said I could do it with a stinger. You didn't really think I had a chance, did you? It's not that. Well, after all, that hind shot down two F-16s. It is hard to believe that after doing that, it got taken out by just one man. Nice going, Snake. I don't know why, but the elevator just started working again. If you take it all the way to the bottom of Tower B and go outside, you'll be in the snowfield. Snake, there's something I forgot to tell you before. What? There were five stealth camouflage prototypes in my lab. Yeah, so? If you take out the one I'm wearing, that leaves four. Hey, this isn't first grade math class. I thought I'd get one for you. So I went back to the lab and... Yeah? The four suits were missing. Also, about the elevator that I checked out, it's really strange. It was like someone was intentionally holding it. When you were riding on it, did the weight limit warning go off? That's another thing that bothered me about it. The warning went off, and I know I couldn't be over the limit. How much do you weigh? About 135. But that elevator had a weight limit of 650 pounds. It would take at least five people to go over that limit. Look out, Snake! The guys who stole my stealth prototypes are in there with you! They're using stealth camouflage. You can't see them, so listen closely. Use your ears. How does that stealth technology work? Is it optic or chemical? Do you know, Snake? Ask the person who invented it. He should know. Snake, you can't fight what you can't see. Use your thermal goggles. Snake, use all five of your senses. You can do it even without thermal goggles. Stealth camouflage? Yes. That is the new material recently developed which hides a person's body by bending light. I think you should ask the person who invented it. Use the thermal goggles like Dr. Emmerich said. If you don't have thermal goggles, there's not much you can do. Try to watch for a faint disturbance in the air. That's where your stealth soldiers are. Otacon, I can't see them. What should I do? Oh... Stealth camouflage works by bending the light around an object. That's how it makes them invisible. But it doesn't have the ability to mask heat. Use your thermal goggles, Snake. You'll be able to see their heat signatures. Huh? You don't have any thermal goggles? Well, with your eyesight, you might be able to spot them if you look really hard. It looks like the weather is getting worse. Try using your binoculars. What about the satellite data? I'm sorry, Snake. I can't see the entrance in the satellite photos either. What about a heat source? An exhaust pipe or something? I can't confirm anything. Only that there are multiple heat sources to the southeast of your position. That's probably just the burning wreckage from the hind. Snake, you're in a big open space surrounded by walls. The entrance to the underground base should be somewhere in there. Stay close to the walls and you won't get lost. Snake, you're our only hope. Please stop them from launching that nuke. The entrance to the underground maintenance base is somewhere towards the back of the snowfield north of Tower B. Otacon, which direction is the underground base? 
It's in the snowfield to the north of Tower B. The door is security level 6. The weather's terrible. Make sure you don't get lost out there. Snake, I don't have to tell you, but it's bitter cold out there. It'd be dangerous to stay out in the snowfield too long. Snake, are you okay? Otacon, were there any other stealth prototypes? No, there were only five. So, this isn't stealth camouflage then. What are you talking about? Someone's aiming at me, in the middle of this blizzard. It's her! Wolf? Sniper Wolf? Yes, it's her. It's definitely her. Otacon, you sound like you're happy. No, I'm not. So then what is it? Snake, please don't kill her. Are you insane? Please! She's a good person. You'd know that if you talked to her. Listen to me, kid. She's a merciless killer. I can see you perfectly from here. <laughs> I told you, I'd never quit the hunt. Now you're mine. Wolf, no, you can't. Don't get between a wolf and its prey. You're pretty good if you can hit me in this storm. You see, women naturally make better soldiers. Wolf, don't do this. Snake, I'm near. Can't you sense me near you? It's a mistake for a sniper to reveal our location. Is that right? Well, I'm going to send you a love letter, my dear. Do you know what that is? It's a bullet straight from my gun to your heart. Please, Wolf! Snake, no! Quiet! Don't get in our way! Now I'm gonna pay you back for Meryl. You men are so weak. You can never finish what you start. It's Sniper Wolf. You can only shoot at her with your PSG-1. Snake, Wolf is hiding somewhere in that snowfield. First you'll have to find out where she is. She should come out of hiding briefly to shoot at you. Snake, look at your sea rations. They're frozen. You can't use frozen sea rats. Until they defrost, you won't be able to replenish your energy. Be very careful. They'll defrost in a warm place. Probably just your bare skin would be fine. Sniper Wolf. It is pretty unusual for a sniper to announce their presence before they shoot. She must have a real thing for you. Anyway, I do not think it is going to be as easy as before. Snake, to get to the underground base, you have to get past the snowfield where Sniper Wolf is waiting. You will have to take care of her to complete your mission. Otacon, where can I find ammo for the PSG-1? I... I can't tell you. It looks like Wolf is down. Now get to Metal Gear's underground base on the double. So, you beat Wolf, huh? She was a fool to use the same tactics that failed her in your first meeting. But remember, don't let down your guard until you've got a confirmed kill. A sad story. We shouldn't have turned our backs on the Kurds after the Gulf War. Listen, we're not responsible for her choices. Everyone decides their own fate, no matter where they were born. Words like fate, karma, it's just an excuse for giving up if you ask me. I don't agree with you. Maybe if she hadn't been born on a battlefield, she might have had a happier, more fulfilling life. She might not have turned into a killer. Snake, hurry up and get to Metal Gear's underground base. The entrance should be towards the back of the snowfield. The entrance to the underground maintenance base is in the north of the snowfield. I'll be watching, Snake. Master, you and I, we're nothing more than dogs, are we? That's not like you, Snake. Don't let what Sniper Wolf said bother you. Listen, there's not a soldier alive that doesn't question himself. And if there is one, he's nothing more than a murderer. But someone like Wolf, a soldier who's looking for nothing more than their own death, is no good to anyone either. Once she started to look for death, it was all over. That's how you'll end up too, Snake. One way to prevent your sea rations from freezing is to hold them close to your body by equipping them. Your sea rations are frozen? Never eat frozen sea rats. It'll cause a temperature imbalance that'll drain your strength. Make sure you warm those seas before you eat them. Colonel, listen to me. I found a parachute near the wreckage of the Hind. A parachute? You don't think that liquid survived? 
Impossible. As soon as he jumped out of the pilot's seat, he'd be sliced up faster than an onion on an infomercial. So what's that parachute doing there, then? I have no idea. A trap? Either that, or a message. To me. Meaning I'm not dead, I suppose. Maybe. But I think it's more like, I'll string you up. Well, in any case, don't let your guard down. I won't. Snake, that's a blast furnace. A blast furnace? What do they use that for? There's no airport on the base, so it's hard to bring in supplies. They must have built a blast furnace so they could make building materials and such. That makes sense. Whew. I'm starting to sweat. It's getting kind of warm. The entrance to the underground base is further below. There should be a cargo elevator that you can take down somewhere around there. Try to find it. The elevator to the underground base was in the northeast of the bottom floor. Right, Snake? Colonel, there's an elevator, but it's stuck on a floor below. That elevator can probably only be moved from below. There must be some other way down. Look around. Dr. Emmerich knows the base well. Why don't you ask him? Watch out for the steam. It's dangerous. Use your first-person view mode to see where the steam is coming out, and then avoid it. Yeah, I like a sauna now and then, but this is too much. You have a good view, though your movement is limited. It might be a good place to take out your enemy with your PSG-1. There's a cargo elevator in the northeast part of the bottom floor. You can take that to Metal Gear's underground base. You'll spot it right away. It's got a big patrol light attached to it. The elevator is stopped at a lower floor and it won't come up. Is there some way to get to an elevator that will take me down further? Well, there is one, but... Where? Can you see to the west of the blast furnace? You see that crane? I think if you go down those steps, you'll get to the other side. Did you ever see anyone actually go down there? No, but I've seen mice go there. Do I look like a mouse to you? Be careful of that crane, too. If you stick close to those steps, I think you can make it to the other side. Probably. Are you in the boiler room? Those pipes are really old. Once in a while they blow out steam, so be careful. You call this once in a while? Snake, isn't that the elevator that goes down to Metal Gear's underground base? Yeah, but there's no button for calling the elevator. Maybe it'll come if you wait. Why don't you ask Dr. Emmerich? Snake. Blow away all the bad guys, or you're not going to be able to get out of there and get to the underground base. Metal Gear is straight down. Better move it. There's no time. The terrorists are ready to launch. Negotiations are all finished. The government can't cave into terrorist demands. But they're threatening to launch a nuclear weapon. They've made their final decision. Why is the White House being so inflexible? Colonel, is there still something you're hiding from me? Snake, please, just concentrate on stopping them, okay? It looks like that elevator you were riding on won't go any further down. Switch to the other elevator. Snake, take that elevator all the way down to the underground base. If you take that cargo elevator down, you'll wind up in Metal Gear's underground maintenance base. It's automatically set to go back and forth between the blast furnace and the underground base. It's not there yet, so you'll just have to wait. Snake... The elevator won't move unless you push the switch. There's a control panel, right? Get closer and press the action button. Snake, there's nowhere to hide in that elevator. You'll have to fight. That elevator is for transporting vehicles and building materials to the underground maintenance base. So that's why it's so big. The elevator you're on right now is the number one elevator. That elevator won't take you down all the way. So you'll have to switch to the number two elevator at the relay point. Snake, that's the relay point between Elevator 1 and Elevator 2. Why was it set up this way? Well, for a long time it had been set up so that you could take one elevator all the way to the bottom. But I heard that they changed it because of something to do with the structural integrity of the rock. The number 2 elevator is next to you, right? Transfer to that one. If you take that elevator down, you'll wind up in the warehouse. Metal Gear's underground maintenance base is just past there. Crows? What? There are a lot of crows here. What the hell are all these crows doing around here? Crows? You got me. There were crows around from before, but for some reason they started to really increase in number around the same time that Foxhound came to the base. It's really weird. I wonder what it could mean. Ravens. What? There are a lot of ravens here. 
What the hell are all these ravens doing around here? Ravens? You got me. There were ravens around from before, but for some reason they started to really increase in number around the same time that Foxhound came to the base. It's really weird. I, I wonder what it could mean. There are a lot of crows around here. Those aren't crows. Those are northern ravens. The Inuit and other Native Americans worship northern ravens as creator deities. Some say that ravens have the power to predict death. The great poet Marlowe wrote about them in the 16th century. Thus, like the sad presaging raven that tolls the sick man's passport in her hollow beak, and in the shadow of the silent night doth shake contagion from her sable wings. That's pretty gloomy, Master. Ravens will eat vegetables, meat, garbage, pretty much anything. It seems dirty to us, but that's what allows them to live even in a climate like this. Legends say that crows have three times the lifespan of a man, and that ravens have three times the lifespan of a crow. That's just an old wives' tale, but it's true that crows live longer than many types of birds. Northern ravens can live pretty close to 70 years. By the way... What? Snake. I've got something to tell you about Naomi Hunter. What about her? Is this conversation secure? Don't worry, the monitor's off. Okay. What's up? I was in the FBI too, you know. I didn't know that. What's your point? Dr. Hunter's story about her background, about her grandfather being an assistant secretary to Hoover in the FBI. Yeah. And then going undercover to investigate the mafia in New York. Yeah, what about it? It was all a big lie. What did you say? It was really bothering me. Why would she lie about it? She lied? She might be a spy. Ridiculous. Come on, even a high school student could see past it. The head of the FBI at that time, Edgar Hoover, he was a well-known racist. Didn't Naomi say that her father was Japanese? Yeah. Well, back then, there wasn't a single Asian investigator. Also, in the 1950s, the undercover mafia sting operations hadn't even started yet. They first started in 1960, in Chicago, not New York. But... You better check it out. The chief and the president mysteriously dying, and that ninja? Too many strange things are happening. Are you saying that Naomi might be behind it? I don't know. Either that, or she's working with the terrorists. Could it be? If I find out anything, I'll call. In the meantime, be careful. Colonel, where's Naomi? I'm right here, Snake. What is it? Oh, uh, nothing. Forget it. Strange. Snake, by now those terrorists have finished their launch preparations. Stop wasting time. Metal Gear's base is up ahead. Be careful. You're just recovering from a cold. Snake, stop lollygagging around and get to Metal Gear's base. There's no time. Snake, it's over 30 below outside. What's wrong? Forget it. Thanks. Mei Ling, how's Naomi? Hmm? She's fine, I guess. What's up? Oh. Uh, what do you want, Snake? If you want to talk to Naomi, why don't you call her? Oh, it's nothing. Forget about it. Strange guy. I want to ask you about Naomi. I'm looking into the details now, but it doesn't look good. Weren't you ever suspicious about her, Snake? Snake, keep your guard up. That place is right in the middle of the permafrost. Just like the name says, it never melts. I've heard over 85% of Alaska is permafrost. It's extremely cold there, Snake. If you don't hurry, your sea rations will freeze. They're already frozen. You can warm them up by equipping them. After a while, they should be okay to eat. Vulcan Raven is half Native Alaskan American and half Inuit. He was raised as a shaman, and they say he has supernatural powers. During the Cold War, he trained in Russia with the Bimpel, the Soviet Special Forces. In 1993, he was demoted by President Yeltsin following his coup d'etat. So he fled the country and became a mercenary. After that, he joined those rent-a-war bastards at Outer Heaven, Inc. He stayed there until he joined us in Foxhound, thanks to a strong recommendation from Revolver Ocelot. 
That cannon he's holding is a 20 millimeter Vulcan gun. You usually see them mounted on fighter planes. You can't take him on in a firefight. He'll make mincemeat of you. He's not just strong, Snake. He's a graduate emeritus from Alaska University, so he's a quick thinker, too. In any case, you'd better not try to attack him from the front. Normal weapons are no match for his 20 millimeter Vulcan. Try to attack him from the sides or behind. You're at a disadvantage in a frontal assault. Try attacking him with a remote-controlled missile. Maneuver it between the containers to get it to come up behind him. But if you fly the missiles too slow, they'll get shot down even if they approach him from behind. Try to get them close by flying them at top speed or by maneuvering them around corners. When the containers get destroyed, they'll block your way. Try to take him out before that happens. You could also try to predict where he's gonna move and set up some C4. If your timing is good, it might work. It looks like Raven is holding an M61A1 20mm multi-turreted machine gun. They are usually mounted on F-16s. With its six rotating turrets, it can fire 4,000 20mm rounds per minute. And it is accurate, too. If you come at him from the front, he'll turn you into burst. Stay out of his way. You have to hide and attack. Try a remote-controlled missile or your C4 explosives. That room is still under construction, because their main priority was to finish Metal Gear's underground base. But the good thing is, with all those containers, it should be easy to hide, right? A native Alaskan-American, huh? Probably Athapaskan. They're originally from the same tribe as the Apaches and Navajos of New Mexico. Anthropologically, they are related to the Japanese. There are even linguistic similarities between Athapaskan languages and ancient Japanese. You and he probably share many of the same ancestors. Master, I don't remember telling you that I was part Japanese. The four-man carry is a race where you have to run with four grown men hanging from a long stick that you carry on your back. Apparently, Raven does it with six men. Snake, it's me. Master. It's about Naomi. Turn your monitor off. What about Naomi? Damn. Colonel, is Naomi there? No, she's away. She's taking a short nap. Hmm. So what is this about Naomi? Okay. Maybe we'd better let the Colonel hear this, too. Yeah. Go on, Master. Well, basically, Dr. Naomi Hunter is not Dr. Naomi Hunter at all. What? I thought her story of her background sounded kind of fishy, so I checked it out. And? There is an actual Dr. Naomi Hunter, or I should say, there was one. But she's not the woman we know. The real Naomi Hunter disappeared somewhere in the Middle East. Our Naomi must have somehow obtained her identification papers. So then who is she really? She must be some kind of... spy. A spy? Yes. Maybe she's been sent to sabotage this operation. Are you saying she's with the terrorists? I don't want to believe it either, but she is working for Foxhound. So you think she had a part in the uprising? Or she could be working with some different group altogether. Different group? It couldn't be... Place her under arrest. What? She's betrayed us. She needs to be arrested and interrogated to find out who she's with. If she's one of their spies, then we're in big trouble. What do you mean? Uh, nothing. Have you let her in on some kind of vital secret or something? Does this have anything to do with the mysterious deaths of the DARPA chief and the arms tech president? I... I have no idea. Anyway, we cannot allow her to participate any further in this mission. Wait, wait a minute. Without her, we can't complete this mission. I knew it. You're hiding something. Give me some time. I'll try to get it out of her. Hurry, then. We've got to figure out who she is and what she's doing here. I understand. Snake, give me some time. I don't have any time left for you. Snake, if it's about Naomi, I'm looking into the matter right now. Give me a little more time. Where is she? She's still sleeping. I can't believe it. First, the DARPA chief turns out to be an imposter, and now Naomi. What the hell is going on here? I suppose you're going to tell me you don't know anything, right? I'm sorry, Snake. Uh, a madman is threatening the world with a nuclear weapon. I guess that's what I should worry about now. 
Snake, stop that launch. Head for the control room in the underground base. The control room is on the third floor of the underground base, isn't it? Give Dr. Emmerich a call. There's no time. Snake, hurry up and get to Metal Gear's underground base. It's north of the warehouse where you fought Raven. Naomi wasn't acting strangely or anything? No, I just can't believe that Naomi's an enemy spy. I refuse to accept that. I don't want to believe it either, but... Don't say it, Snake. Snake, I am detecting high levels of radiation coming from that waterfall. If you get too close, you could be exposed. Besides the dismantled warheads, Shadow Moses Island must also be storing some other kind of nuclear materials. Whatever it is, it must be leaking. You have probably heard it before, but I will tell you again. Most nuclear storage facilities are not in much better shape than this one. They are causing immeasurable damage to the environment. I don't know anything about Dr. Naomi, so there's not much I can say. But Snake... I think you'd better leave that to Colonel Campbell. Don't you think you'd better just get to the control room? Snake, I'm sure that woman calling herself Naomi is some type of spy. And now I'm starting to think that Campbell might be hiding something too. Don't trust him. Snake, that water is contaminated with nuclear waste material. If you go in there, you'll take damage. Nuclear waste? They were extremely careless with their handling of nuclear materials. Nastasha knows all about that if you want more info. That's where the emergency PAL code override system is. The control room is on the third floor of the base you're in. Do you see that ladder next to Metal Gear? You can climb up there. Snake, isn't the detonation code input system in the control room? Hurry up and get in there. Snake, it's me. What's wrong? Did you find a good place to hide? Yeah, thanks to the stealth gear. It looks like they've finished getting Metal Gear ready. How do you know that? I overheard them talking. Where are you now? Right in front of Metal Gear, but it's strange. What is? There's nobody here. No guards, nobody patrolling. It's too quiet. Maybe because they're all ready. They said they even input the PAL codes. What should I do? All we can do is use the override system that President Baker told you about. But I've only got one of the three keys, and besides that, like Ocelot said, there's some trick to using the keys. Leave it to me. You got some kind of plan? Well, I'm in the computer room right now. I'm trying to access Baker's private files. Baker's files? Don't you need a password? Of course, but there are ways. Are you a hacker? Yep, that describes me pretty well. Does it look like you can get in? I don't know yet. I'll give it a try. I'm counting on you. Snake, it's me again. How's it going? Uh, not bad. I just got past his third security level. He was a pretty careful guy. Do you think you'll break in soon? I never met a system I couldn't bust into. Okay, keep trying. Otacon, how's it going? Not yet. Give me a little more time. Got it yet? Please, Snake, give me a little more time. How about it? Did you find the override system file? Not yet. I need a little more time. Well, I found lots of information about that new nuclear weapon. There are four stages involved in launching a ballistic missile. The first one is the boost stage. It starts at the point the missile is launched and ends after all the rocket fuel is burned and the missile is propelled into the exosphere. The next stage is the post-boost stage. It starts after all the fuel is burned and ends after the re-entry vehicle is ejected. Next is the intermediate course stage. It takes place after the re-entry vehicle is ejected and lasts until the missile enters the exosphere. Then comes the final stage. It starts when the re-entry vehicle enters the exosphere and it lasts until it reaches its ultimate target on the ground. Missile defense systems use military satellites to detect rocket emissions during the initial boost stage of a missile. But this new nuclear weapon employs the railgun's ability to fire projectiles at ultra-high velocities instead of using a rocket. That's why it can't be detected by today's missile defense systems. And on top of that, the re-entry vehicle also uses stealth technology. It's so accurate that its 50% zone comes close to 50 meters. That's as good as the best ICBM. A highly accurate, undetectable, uninterceptable nuclear weapon. We wouldn't even be able to tell where it came from. And that's not all. A standard ballistic missile uses a two-stage or a three-stage solid-fuel rocket for its propulsion system. 
Besides costing lots of money, safely maintaining the solid rocket fuel and readying the missile for launch requires a lot of work. But a railgun-launched nuclear warhead avoids all of those problems. And it's cheap, too. It's the perfect nuke. A general's dream. And the world's nightmare. Did you find the file for the override system? Just wait a little longer. I found out a lot about the arms industry, though. After the Cold War ended, the United States slashed its defense budget by more than 15%. Naturally, the arms industry was severely affected. It resulted in an orgy of mergers and acquisitions. Some of the big arms conglomerates today are made up of what 10 years ago would have been 20 or more smaller arms companies. Arms tech is one of those. But we lost our bid to produce the U.S. Air Force's next line of fighter jets. Then we took a stab at civilian applications, but that was a failure too. The company was about to go belly up. Ironically, the Defense Department was in pretty much the same situation. Thanks to big budget cuts, they were forced to turn to the private sector to help fund their weapons development. On top of that, the government began to actively export their advanced weapons technology to the private sector in order to maintain a high standard of quality in the country's defense armaments. Eventually, they decided on a joint development project for new weapon systems between the DOD and the private sector. And since both sides were in such bad financial shape, that's where all the backscratching came in. So there was another reason for the joint development of Metal Gear, huh? It wasn't just President Baker trying to keep arms tech afloat. Snake, I did it! You got past security? Bingo! Great. So what do you got? I accessed the confidential Metal Gear file. So what about the PAL override system that Baker talked about? I haven't found it yet. That's what I need to know. But Snake, I found something else. What? The secret behind the new nuclear weapon. Just as I thought, the nuclear warhead is designed to be fired from the railgun like a projectile. It doesn't use fuel, so it isn't considered a missile. That way it can get around all sorts of international treaties. Pretty sneaky. Yes, but effective. And that's not even the scariest thing about this weapon. Oh, I can't wait to hear this. It's a stealth weapon. You mean it won't show up on radar? Yeah. The truth is, they've been working on a stealth missile since the late 70s. Why weren't they able to develop one until now? Because of the missile rocket propulsion system. It would be picked up by enemy satellites. Oh yeah, that makes sense. But unlike a missile, the railgun doesn't burn any propellant, so it can't be detected by any current ballistic missile detection systems. An invisible nuclear warhead. Totally impossible to intercept. And on top of that, it's got a surface-piercing warhead designed to penetrate hardened underground bases. Yeah, we learned that lesson in the Gulf War. This thing could mean the end of the world. It's the ultimate weapon. And from a political point of view, it avoids the problem of nuclear reduction and nuclear inspections. Colonel, is this true? Are you listening? I'm listening. If word of this got out, it could delay the signing of the START III treaty and cause a huge international incident. Yeah, it would be nasty. The United States would be denounced by the UN. It could even bring the president down. Did you know this, Colonel? I'm sorry. You've changed, Colonel. I won't make any excuses. Snake, listen to me. This new nuclear weapon, it's never actually been tested, only simulated. You mean they ran a computer model? Yeah, that's why they were conducting this exercise. They needed to get actual experimental data to back up the simulation. What were the results of the exercise? It looks like it went better than they hoped for, but I can't find the data anywhere on this network. You'd think that data as important as that would be carefully recorded. It was. President Baker gave me an optical disk with all of the test data. What? Do you still have it? No. Ocelot took it from me. Damn. The terrorists have replaced the dummy warhead with a real warhead. Once they input the detonation codes, they should be ready to launch. So you think they can do it? Well, the dummy warhead was designed to be identical to the real thing, so I think so. Did you find out how to override it yet? Not yet. It must be in a separate file. Right now I'm looking through all of Baker's personal files. We're counting on you. Snake! Did you find it? No. I haven't found out about the override system yet. But I found Baker's ulterior motive. He's just looking to get rich, isn't he? Well, that's part of it. 
Armstech is in much worse financial trouble than I thought. I know they lost their bid to make the next generation fighter jet. That plus the reduction in SDI spending. It looks like there was even some talk of a hostile takeover. Everything was riding on this project, I guess. And it looks like we were paying a lot of bribe money to the DARPA chief. Bribe money, huh? Yeah. And Baker was a big proponent of the nuclear deterrent theory. I see. So anyway, what about the override? Just give me a little bit longer. Snake, I found Baker's top secret files. Great job. How's it going there? They've finished inputting the PAL codes. So how do we deactivate them? Okay. You see, the override system that the President was talking about, it can also be used to input the detonation codes. You see, if you insert the keys when the warhead is active, you deactivate it. And if you insert them when it's inactive, it becomes activated. And you can only use the keys once. Only once, huh? Yeah. You better get started. We don't have much time. But it takes three keys, right? I've only got one of them. Hold on a minute. You see, that's the trick. You already have all three keys. What are you talking about? The card key is made of a shape memory alloy. Shape memory alloy? Yes. It's a material that changes shape at different temperatures. The key is made out of it. This card key? Yeah. The card key changes shape at different temperatures. So this key is actually three keys in one. Clever. Snake, they've input both detonation codes. The only way to stop the launch now is to use the card key to re-input the codes. Snake, get that card key back from the rat. Why don't you watch its route and set up a trap for it with a C4 or something? Find that key. It fell somewhere in that drainage ditch. Use your mind detector. Mind detector? Yes. The mind detector works just like a metal detector. The position of the card key should show up on your radar screen. You got the card key. Good. Now get back to the control room and use that key to re-input the PAL codes. Stop that launch. The terrorists are finished inputting the detonation codes. The only way to stop the launch now is to re-input the detonation codes to lock the detonation mechanism. You need that key to do it. Find that key, Snake. There's no other way. You lost the key? Hurry up and find it. They've already entered the detonation code. If you use the mine detector, you should be able to find the key, even if it fell into the drainage ditch. Whatever you do, find that key. The only way to stop that launch is to lock the system by re-inputting the detonation codes. Snake, did you find the key? No, it's not here. Don't be ridiculous. You saw it fall into the drainage ditch, didn't you? The drainage ditch. Isn't there something odd about it? No. There are a lot of big rats, though. That's it, Snake. A rat must have eaten it. Now who's being ridiculous? No, I'm right. There's no other possibility. Rats eat all sorts of things. There's nothing unusual about that. Snake, a rat ate that key. You'll have to get it back. Follow the rat's route. You got the card key back? Good job. Now hurry to the control room. Snake, the card key changed shape. That's no good. Change it back. Snake, the surveillance camera. When you insert the card key, don't let it see you. Try using your chaff. You could probably use a box, too. Snake, re-input the PAL codes. You've got to lower that card key's temperature. Find someplace cold. Good. The card key changed shape. Hurry up to the control room, Snake. Snake, look at the card key. It changed to its original shape. You'll have to change it again. Snake, don't warm that card key. Cool it down. Find someplace cool. Now you've got to warm the key up. Find someplace hot. What about Naomi? Sorry, Snake. I'm still investigating. You did it! That's the last one! Hurry to the control room! Snake, what are you doing? You're supposed to warm it, not cool it. Look for a warm place. That key is actually an IC card. Its connector pins and main body are made of a shape memory alloy. It's designed so that unless it's been changed to the correct shape, it won't be recognized by the PAL code input terminal in the control room, and the detonation code won't be entered. You found the card key, right? First comes the room temperature key. Put it into the far left terminal in the control room. Snake, the card key changed shape. You've got to change it back to room temperature. 
Next, you've got to cool the card key. Where should I do that? This is Alaska. Go outside. It's cold everywhere. Next, you've got to cool the card key. You're close to the warehouse where you fought Raven, right? That place is right in the middle of the permafrost layer, and there's no heater either. But you're close to the warehouse where you fought Raven, right? That place is right in the middle of the permafrost layer, and there's no heater either. Snake, it looks like you changed the card key's shape correctly. Go and put it into the middle terminal in the control room before it warms up and changes back to its original shape. Snake, look at the card key. It changed back. You have to change it again. Somewhere warm? What about the blast furnace? But the problem is, if you go through a cold place on the way back, the card key might change shape. You need to hurry on the way back. It looks like you changed the shape correctly. The last card key goes in the far right terminal in the control room. But be careful. If you're in a cold place for too long, it'll change back to its original shape. You need to hurry. You still haven't input the final card key. Hurry to the control room. That's not the right shape. Hurry and warm it up. The blast furnace is probably the best place. Now freeze that key. Get somewhere cold. The key changed shape. Hurry to the control room and input it. Now you've got to warm it. You need to find some place hot. The key changed shape. Hurry to the control room. That's the last key. Master, I've never heard you so excited. You got the card key back? Good job. Hurry and input it. Hurry up and get to the control room. Input that last key. First, you have to change the shape of the last key. Snake, it's about Naomi Hunter. Then you should talk to the Colonel. He's looking into it. Turn your monitor off. Okay, it's off. No one else can hear us. Go ahead. Sorry, but I didn't want the Colonel to hear. Okay, so what's up? I've got a good friend in the Pentagon. Yeah? He's the one who told me about it. It looks like the DIA recently developed a new type of assassination weapon. An assassination weapon? Snake, have you ever heard of something called fox dye? No. Fox dye. Liquid and the others were talking about it. Yeah. It's some kind of virus that, that targets specific people. I don't know all the details, but... What are you trying to say? It's too similar. What is? The cause of death. Didn't the arms tech president and the DARPA chief, I mean, decoy octopus, die of something that looked like a heart attack? Yeah. Well, apparently, fox dye kills its victims by simulating a heart attack. No. You're telling me that Naomi was behind it? Snake, try to remember. Did Naomi give you some kind of injection? Nanomachines. She was in the best position to have done it, but I don't know what her motive was. Does the Colonel know? I'm not sure. But he still hasn't questioned her. Okay, I'll ask him myself. Colonel, what's new with the Naomi situation? I just placed Naomi under arrest. Arrest? She was sending coded messages towards the Alaskan base. I didn't want to believe it, but she must be working with the terrorists. Are you sure? I'm afraid so. She's being interrogated now. What kind of interrogation? Well, I'd like to avoid the rough stuff, but we don't even have any sodium pentothal here. Call me if you find out anything. So it's true, isn't it? Naomi, I can't believe it. That means the fox dye vaccine must be around somewhere. Listen, I've got bigger things to worry about. But Snake, you might be infected too, you know. All I can do is leave it up to the Colonel. Colonel, what's new with Naomi? She's being interrogated, Snake. Leave her to me. You just worry about stopping Metal Gear. Please, Snake. I consider you my friend. Please believe that. Snake, we're just about out of time. Get to the control room. I cannot believe it. Dr. Naomi working with the terrorists? I don't want to believe it either. But if what Campbell says is true... I know. Nastasha, have you ever heard of fox dye? Fox dye? No, sorry. I never heard of it. Oh well, forget about it.
Snake, forget about Dr. Naomi. Right now, the most important thing you have to worry about is reinserting that PAL code. Naomi's an enemy spy? I can't believe it. I don't want to believe it either, but... Snake, leave it to Colonel Campbell. You've got to concentrate on re-inputting that detonation code. You're right. So Naomi's a spy, just like I thought. Campbell is hiding something too. But that's okay. Fox dye is a virus, a biological weapon. There must be a vaccine. We can worry about getting that later, Snake. But right now, you've got to focus on re-inputting those detonation codes, okay? Snake, can you hear me? It's Naomi. Naomi? What the hell? Campbell and the others are busy right now. I'm on a different codec. Naomi, is what the Colonel says true? Yes. But not everything I said was a lie. Who are you? I don't know myself. I don't know my real name or even what my parents looked like. I bought all my identification. But my reason for getting into genetics was true. Because you want to know yourself, right? That's right. I want to know where I came from. My, my age, my race, anything. Naomi. I was found in Rhodesia sometime in the 80s, a dirty little orphan. Rhodesia? What's now known as Zimbabwe? Yes. Rhodesia was owned by England until 1965 and there were lots of Indian laborers around. That's probably where I got my skin color from, but I'm not even sure about that. Naomi, you're too worried about the past. Isn't it enough to understand who you are now? Understand who I am now? Why should I? No one else tries to understand me. I was alone for so long. Until I met my big brother. And him. Your big brother? Yes. Frank Yeager. What? He was a young soldier. When he picked me up near the Zambezi River. I was half dead from starvation and he shared his rations with me. Yes, Frank Yeager. The man who you destroyed was my brother and my only family. No. Gray Fox? We survived that hell together, Frank and I. He protected me. He's my one connection. The only connection I have to my past. And he brought you back to America? No. I was in Mozambique when he came. Who is he? You mean Big Boss? Yes. He brought us to this land of freedom. This America. And then he and my brother went back to Africa to continue the war. And that's when it happened. You killed my benefactor and sent my brother home a cripple. I vowed revenge and joined Foxhound. I knew it was my best chance to meet you, and I prayed for the day that I would. So, were your prayers answered? Yes. I waited two long years. To kill me? Is that all you cared about? Yes. That's right. Two years. You were all I thought about for two long years. Like some kind of twisted obsession. Do you still hate me? Not exactly. I was partly wrong about you. What about Liquid and the others? <laughs> I'll have my revenge on them, too. Naomi, you didn't kill that doctor, too, did you? The one that used Gray Fox for his genome experiments? Dr. Clark? No. That was my brother. Afterwards, I covered it up and helped him hide out. So that ninja... I mean, Gray Fox... He's come here to kill me? I don't think so. I think he just came here to fight you. I wasn't sure before, but now I think I understand. A final battle with you. That's all he lives for. I'm sure of it. Fox. No. Naomi, tell me something. About Fox Dye? Fox Dye is a type of retrovirus that targets and kills only specific people. First, it infects the macrophages in the victim's body. Fox dye contains smart enzymes created through protein engineering. 
They're programmed to respond to specific genetic patterns in the cells. Those enzymes recognize the target's DNA? Right. They respond by becoming active and using the macrophages they begin creating TNF epsilon. Huh? It's a type of cytokine, a peptide which causes cells to die. The TNF epsilon is carried along the bloodstream to the heart where they attach to the TNF receptors in the heart cells. And then they cause a heart attack? The heart cells suffer a shock and undergo an extreme apoptosis. Then the victim dies. Apoptosis? You mean the heart cells commit suicide? Naomi. What? You must have programmed that thing to kill me too, right? Do I still have time? Naomi, I don't blame you for wanting me dead, but I can't go yet. I still have a job to do. Listen, Snake. I'm not the one who made the decision to use Fox Dye. Huh? You weren't. You were injected with Fox Dye as a part of this operation. I just wanted to let you know that. No, that's not the whole truth. Huh? The real thing I wanted to tell you was... Snake, I... I... Hey, what are you doing? Ah! Ah! Snake! Naomi! Snake, I can't allow Naomi to make any more unauthorized transmissions. What? Naomi's been removed from this operation. What happened to Naomi? What did she mean when she said that Fox Die was a part of this operation? Colonel, let me talk to her. I won't. She's under arrest. Colonel, you double-crossed me. Snake, there's no time for that. Right now, your job is to stop Metal Gear. Okay, Snake? Snake, Naomi's under arrest. What the hell is happening over there? What's the Colonel thinking? Campbell is... I'm sorry, I can't say any more. But please believe me, I'm here to help you until the end. Nastasha, I'm going to ask you one more time. Do you know anything about Fox Die and the real nature of this operation? Sorry, I have not been told anything about that. That's funny. The Colonel said almost exactly the same thing. Sorry, I didn't mean to sound sarcastic. I believe you. I can't really blame Dr. Naomi. I feel sorry for her. Ever since I was a little kid, I always hated my first name. Hal, isn't it? Yeah, but I'm not a computer, I'm a human. My grandfather taking part in the Manhattan Project, my father being born on the day of the Hiroshima bomb, I hated every part of that. My name, my father, my grandfather, it felt like all those things were a ball and chain around my legs, dragging me down. But now that I think about it, I realized that I was blessed. At least I know who I am, where I came from. But Dr. Naomi didn't even know who her parents were, what her real name was. She must have been a very lonely little girl. Otacon. Sorry, Snake. I guess right now you should focus on re-inputting those PAL codes. So Naomi used Fox Dye to take her revenge on you. Yeah, but she said she wasn't the one who made the decision to use it. According to her, it was just one part of this operation. Hmm. If this goes all the way up to Campbell, it might not be so easy to get that vaccine. Oh well. Forget about it. Thank you, Snake. Now the detonation code is completed. Nothing can stop Metal Gear now. Master, what's going on? You found the key, and even activated the warhead for us too. I really must express my gratitude. Sorry to have involved you in that silly shape memory alloy business. What are you talking about? We weren't able to learn the DARPA chief's code. Even with Mantis' psychic powers, he couldn't read his mind. Then Ocelot accidentally killed him during the interrogation. In other words, we weren't able to launch the nuclear device and we were all getting a little worried. Without the threat of a nuclear strike, our demands would never be met. What do you mean? 
Without the detonation codes, we had to find some other way. That's when we decided you might prove useful, Snake. What? First, I thought we might get the information from you, Snake, so I had Decoy Octopus disguise himself as the DARPA chief. Unfortunately, Octopus didn't survive the encounter, thanks to Fox Die. You mean you had this plan from the beginning, just to get me to input the detonation code? Huh? <laughs> you didn't think you made it this far by yourself, did you? Who the hell are you? In any case, the launch preparations are complete. Once the world glimpses the power of this weapon, the White House will have no choice but to surrender the Fox Dye vaccine to me. Their ace in the hole is useless now. Ace in the hole? What the? The Pentagon's plan to use you was already successful in the torture room. <laughs> Snake, you're the only one who doesn't know. Ah, oh, poor fool. Who are you anyway? I'll tell you everything you want to know. If you come where I am, that is. Where are you? Very close by. Snake, that's not Master Miller. Campbell, you're too late. Master Miller's body was just discovered at his home. He's been dead for at least three days. I didn't know because my codec link with Master was cut off, but Mei Ling said his transmission signal was coming from inside the base. So who is it? Snake, you've been talking to... Me, dear brother. Liquid, how the... You've served your purpose. You may die now. Snake, gas! Do something! Snake, call Emmerich. He should be able to break through security. Snake, Emmerich will be able to open the door. Just trust him and hang on. Snake, what are you doing? Go after Liquid! What the hell are you doing, Snake? You've got to stop Metal Gear! Snake, you are in danger. Get out of there! Yeah, but how? All you can do is wait for Dr. Emmerich to open the door. Stay alive, Snake. Isn't there someone who knows this base? Dr. Emmerich, maybe he can do something. Snake, what are you doing? Go after Liquid. Snake, that's bulletproof glass. You can't break it with an ordinary weapon. Can't you open the security lock here? I'll try. Just hold on for a minute. Come on, hurry up already. Hang on. I'm out of time. Just hold on a little longer. Otacon! Almost there. Hold on. I hacked into security. Snake, I'm opening the door. What are you doing? The door is open, Snake. Hurry up and go after Liquid. God help us. Metal Gear is moving. Snake, it's all riding on you now. You've got to stop that thing. But how? You'll have to ask Dr. Emmerich, the guy who made it. Destroy Metal Gear! We're out of time! If you can't do it, I'll have to resort to my last option. Last option? We have a submarine prepared to deliver a full nuclear strike on the base. What the hell? Colonel, Box is dead. I know. God rest his soul. Even a soldier needs more to live for than just fighting. Maybe if he'd found something else, he wouldn't have been so haunted. It was too simple, too pure. There was nothing in this world for him to believe in, so he chose to believe only in himself. I guess you're right. A man like Fox is really only looking for his death. Yeah, but if you ask me, there's no happiness to be gained in death. No peace either. I'm gonna leave here alive. Good. I want that too. If you can shoot a Stinger missile directly into the cockpit, maybe you can destroy it. Come on, Snake. Win! Snake, there's nothing I can do to help you. All I can do is cheer you on. I am a military analyst and an expert on high-tech weapons, but I don't know anything about Metal Gear. Why don't you ask Dr. Emmerich? It probably uses some kind of electronic targeting equipment similar to a tank. If you use chaff, you should be able to confuse it for a little while. 
Radom stands for Radar Dome. It is a cover, protecting a super-sensitive electronic scanning array. Almost all modern combat aircraft have them. It is not just a radar system in there. That radon probably contains infrared sensors, motion detectors, and other equipment, too. It is like a combination of eyes, ears, and nose all rolled into one. If you could destroy that, you might have a chance. Use your Stinger missiles carefully. If you run out, you'll have no chance to win. Snake, Rex's armor is impregnable. You can't do any damage with the weapons you've got. Rex uses the latest advances in compound armor. The only way you can pierce it is with a high-performance heat round. So what do I do? Rex's pilot seat operates exactly like a VR system. It's got multiple sensors connected to a high-tech interface used for the controls. It's completely self-enclosed and shut off from the outside environment. He's not using his naked eyes? That's right. So if you could somehow destroy the sensors... Do you see that round plate on Rex's left arm? Yeah, that thing that looks like a shield. That's a radome. If you can destroy that thing, it won't be able to use its electronic equipment. So he'll be blinded? Yeah, try to hit that radome with a Stinger missile. So that will stop it? No. Rex was designed so it can be controlled manually, too. Oh, great. The part that looks like a beak is where the pilot seat is. In an emergency, it'll open up. Rex's armor is perfect. You can't destroy it. You told me that already. But the interior is a different story. I get it. First I destroy the radome. That will force him to open up the pilot's seat. Right! If you can shoot a Stinger missile into the cockpit, you'll destroy the computer control system. You intentionally designed it with a weak point? It's not a weak point. I like to think of it as a character flaw. People just aren't complete without some type of character flaw, don't you think? I guess so. I owe you one, Otacon. First, use a Stinger missile to destroy the radome and disable its electronics. I saw it in President Baker's top secret files. Rex has a free electron laser mounted on its belly. It's a laser weapon that discharges a laser beam into an electron beam that's been accelerated using giant magnets. It can generate an incredible amount of energy, pretty close to 100 megawatts. That's 10 times greater than any other laser out there. Rex is equipped with anti-tank missiles on both of his knees. They're a laser semi-active homing type that doesn't use wires. The shooter uses a laser illuminator to bounce a laser beam off the target. After that, the missile uses the light reflected off the target to home in on it. Fortunately, the missiles are tipped with heat rounds and not anti-personnel warheads. But if they hit you directly, you'll be sorry. Be careful. If Rex steps on you, it'll be all over. Be very careful when he gets close. The railgun uses magnetism to fire projectiles. By perfecting the process of shell acceleration, the railgun is able to fire a projectile with a muzzle velocity of over 100 kilometers per second. It was originally going to be used as a part of SDI to shoot down enemy ICBMs outside the atmosphere. It's ironic that now it's going to be used to deliver a nuclear warhead. Rex is the first actual prototype model, but they've been doing virtual prototyping for a while now. They pop it into a VR simulation while it's still in the design phase. That way they can make improvements to the design while testing it under all sorts of simulated conditions. So even though it's a prototype, it's extremely well designed. Be careful. Snake, great job. You stopped Metal Gear. No, it's not time to celebrate yet. I can't move. Snake, can you turn your neck? Take a look around. Mei Ling, I don't think I can go through all that again. Please save the mission. Okay, Snake. I'll take care of it. Colonel, can you hear me? Yes, I'm listening. What is the Pentagon trying to do? Colonel, answer me. The Secretary of Defense has taken over active control of this operation. He's on his way there by AWACS. What for? To bomb the place. What? Not only that. B-2 bombers just lifted off from Galena Air Force Base. They're carrying B-6113 surface-piercing tactical nuclear bombs. What? Metal Gear is destroyed. Tell the Secretary of Defense. The Secretary of Defense heard that Naomi double-crossed us, and he's worried about Fox Die. Now that there's no more danger of a nuclear strike from Metal Gear, he's going to do whatever's necessary to cover up the truth of what really happened here. He's going to drop a nuclear bomb to vaporize all the evidence along with anyone who knows anything. Don't worry, Snake. I'll stop the nuclear strike. How? 
I may only be a figurehead here, but I'm still officially in command of this mission. If I issue an order to delay the strike, it'll confuse the chain of command and at least buy you some time. It'll give you a chance to escape. But, Colonel, if you do that... It's okay, Snake. The truth is, Foxhound was already the subject of an undercover investigation. Merrill was transferred to this base just before the terrorist attack as a way of manipulating me. Those bastards. I'm sorry. They forced me to cooperate in exchange for her life. You better get out of there, Snake. Are you sure? It'll be bad for you. Don't worry. It's the least I can do for you, after all the lies. Colonel. I'm ordering them to cancel the bombing run. After that, there's no turning back. What? What are you doing? What? Snake! Mei Ling, what happened to the Colonel? I don't believe it. What happened? Snake, the Colonel! Roy Campbell has been relieved of duty. This is the Secretary of Defense, Jim Hausman. Put the Colonel back on. He's been placed under arrest for leaking top secret information and for the crime of high treason. Ridiculous. Yes, he's a ridiculous man. He truly believed that he was in command of this operation. You bastard. There won't be a speck of evidence left. I'm sure the President would want the same thing. President ordered this? The President is a busy man. I have complete authority here. How do you plan on explaining a nuclear attack on Alaska to the media? Don't worry. We've prepared a convincing cover story. We'll simply say that the terrorists exploded a nuclear device. Smart. You'll be murdering everyone here. The scientists, the genome army, everyone. Donald, the DARPA chief is already dead. So you didn't mean to kill the DARPA chief after all. He was my friend. And you could care less about what happens to everybody else, huh? Well, if you give me the optic disc, I might consider saving them. What are you talking about? Metal Gear's test data. Donald was supposed to bring it back. I don't have it. I see. Oh well, that's okay. You two are an embarrassment from the 1970s. Our country's dirty little secret. You can't be allowed to live. Well, the bombs will be dropping soon, and you two have a lot of catching up to do. <laughs> Farewell. Snake, it is just you and Liquid now. There is no advice I can give you. Trust yourself. You have got to win. Snake, I don't know anything about fighting, but you've got to beat Liquid. If you look like you're about to fall off the back of Rex, press any button rapidly. You'll be able to climb up more quickly. Snake, it's me. Otacon, good news. Meryl's okay. All right. You saved her, man. Good job. I got some bad news, too. We're about to be bombed. Oh, boy. I guess we're considered expendable. Is there a way out of here? A way out? Uh, yeah. You can take the loading tunnel to the surface. There's a parking garage right next to you. The tunnel leads from there to the surface. The door in front? No. It's a small entrance to the west of that door. How about the security? I just unlocked it. Who do you think you're talking to? I'll take care of security along your escape route, too. What are you going to do? Me? I... I'll stay here. Are you crazy? I need a little more time to take care of your escape route. But... Unlocking the security doors is difficult work. Only I can do it. Otacon... Don't worry. I'm staying here. It's my own decision. Otacon, this is a hardened shelter, but they're going to use a surface-piercing nuclear bomb. It won't hold. I'm through regretting the past. Life isn't all about loss, you know. Snake, I'm a complete person now. I've found a reason to live. Good. Don't die on me. Same to you. Take care of Merrill, okay? I will. Okay, I gotta go. I promise I'll do something about your escape route. Thanks. 
Thanks? Well, that sounds nice. I believe in you. Thanks, Snake. Snake, they've placed the colonel under arrest. I, I don't know what I should do. This will probably be your last save. I'm going to miss those proverbs of yours. Snake... Mei Ling, I have a favor to ask you. Make a hard copy of all the codec conversation data up to this point. I want some insurance. Okay, Snake, leave it to me. Snake, please, be safe for me. Snake, can you hear me? Colonel. Are you okay? Colonel, what happened? The Secretary of Defense has been arrested. Early retirement. Arrested? I was able to get into contact with the President. Metal Gear, the training exercise, all of it. It was all the Secretary of Defense acting alone. Acting alone? What happened to the air raid and the nuclear strike? The orders were rescinded. The F-117s and the B-2 Spirits have returned to the base. Once again, I have complete authority over this operation. I see. Washington isn't stupid enough to use nukes to cover up a few secrets. I wonder about that. In any case, the danger's over. Thanks, Snake. Colonel, you can rest easy. Merrill's fine. Really? Thanks. Thank you, Snake. Snake, I'm sorry. I, I kept a lot of things from you. It's okay, Colonel. Snake, I'm not a Colonel. <laughs> oh, that's right. I've got a present for you. There's a snowmobile close to you. Mei Ling saw it on the satellite photos. This time of year, the glaciers are pretty calm. You should be able to ride right out of there. I'll bet the boys at the DIA and the NSA never expect you to come home alive. Me neither. I better not show my face around here. No danger of that. You two officially died after your jeep sank into the ocean. That's not too far from the truth. Also, there's a helicopter waiting for you on Fox Island. Dr. Hal Emmerich should be somewhere on the base. I want someone to bring him in. I understand. Leave it to me. Okay, Roy. Are you gonna be okay? Don't worry. I've got an insurance policy. A hard copy of all Mei Ling's data. As long as I've got that, you, me, and Mei Ling will be fine. The battery on these nanomachines will run out soon. They won't be able to follow us. I guess we won't meet again. Don't worry. I'll pay you a visit sometime. Really? I look forward to that. Roy, just tell me one thing. What? About Fox Die. Meryl will be fine. She wasn't included in its programming. What about me? It killed Liquid. Naomi said that she wants to talk to you face to face about that. How is she? Don't worry. Mei Ling is with her right now. I'm switching over to Naomi. Snake, it's me. Naomi. I heard about my brother. I'm sorry. But he had one last message he wanted to say to you. What? He told me to tell you to forget about him and to go on with your own life. Frankie said that? Yeah. He also said he'll always love you. Naomi, your brother just saved you, me, and the whole world. He fought with every ounce of strength in his body. Maybe. Maybe now he's finally found some peace. He wasn't really my brother anymore. Ever since he fought with you in Zanzibar, he's been like a ghost. A ghost looking for a place to die. <laughs> Naomi, Liquid died from Fox Die too. What about me? When am I gonna go? That's up to you. What do you mean? Everybody dies when their time is up. Yeah, so when's mine up? It's up to you how you use the time left to you. Live, Snake. It's all I can say to you. Colonel, about Merrill. I... all 
already know. Colonel? Meryl was my daughter. What? I didn't find out until recently. I got a letter from her mother, my dead brother's wife. I was going to tell her after this operation was over. Colonel, I... It's okay, Snake. Thanks anyway. Snake, I'm sorry. I, I kept a lot of things from you. It's okay, Colonel. Snake, I'm not a colonel. <laughs> oh, that's right. I've got a present for you. There's a snowmobile close to you. Mei Ling saw it on the satellite photos. This time of year, the glaciers are pretty calm. You should be able to ride right out of there. I'll bet the boys at the DIA and the NSA never expect you to come home alive. Me neither. I better not show my face around here. No danger of that. You two officially died after your jeep sank into the ocean. That's not too far from the truth. Also, there's a helicopter waiting for you on Fox Island. Okay, Roy. Are you gonna be okay? Don't worry. I've got an insurance policy. A hard copy of all Mei Ling's data. As long as I've got that, you, me, and Mei Ling will be fine. The battery on these nanomachines will run out soon. They won't be able to follow us. I guess we won't meet again. Don't worry. I'll pay you a visit sometime. Really? I look forward to that. Roy, just tell me one thing. What? About Fox Die. What about me? It killed Liquid. Naomi said that she wants to talk to you face to face about that. Are you smoking? Yeah, so what? Didn't you know that cigarettes contain benzopyrene, a chemical that leads to lung cancer? We now know that when benzopyrene enters the body, it changes to benzopyrene diolipoxide, BPDE, and attaches to the receptors on the P53 gene, the gene which causes lung cancer. The BPDE attaches to the P53 gene in three specific locations and causes precancerous changes to the lung tissue. You know a lot about science, but you don't know how good a cigarette tastes in the morning. Snake, are you smoking a cigarette? Cigarettes are poison. They kill people. Didn't you hear what Dr. Naomi said? He that cuts off 20 years of life cuts off so many years of fearing death. Is that why you smoke, Snake? You're too afraid of life? Nuclear weapons, nuclear reactors, hazardous waste. We are constantly being exposed to plutonium and other radioactive materials. Compared to that, smoking seems not so bad, no? What have you got there? A cardboard box? Yeah, remember that trick? That's the snake I remember. Those poor fools won't know what hit them. A cardboard box. A cardboard box usually consists of a thin pasteboard with a corrugated paper center. They are usually made of recycled paper. It was first invented in Europe over a hundred years ago. It was originally used to absorb one's sweat when wearing hats. With the same amount of wood to make one wooden box, you can make six or seven cardboard boxes. And since it's recyclable, it's highly economical. In addition, it's strong and easy to store. That's why it's widely used for packing. But to avoid damaging weapons and other delicate instruments when shipping them, they should be packed in stronger boxes like wood or something. Also, the crevices should be filled with styrofoam to prevent them from moving around. So, anyway, what's with the box? Oh, nothing. No big deal. A cardboard box? I heard stories from my uncle, but I always thought he was pulling my leg. I've got no comment. A cardboard box, huh? Just like Zanzibar. It saved my skin more than a few times in outer heaven, too. Getting the maximum use out of ordinary on-hand objects is the first principle of survival. It's especially important in covert operations. I haven't forgotten what you taught me. Snake, we're not paying you to be a scarecrow, you know. Poor things. Ravens are God's creatures too, Snake. Snake, we don't need a rat trap. We need someone to stop that goddamn nuke from getting launched. Snake, is killing rats really that fun? Torturing small animals is a sign of a warped mind, you know. You still don't have a weapon. If you get into combat, you'll have to rely on your bare hands. 
Listen up, Snake. In unarmed combat, your basic weapon is the punch. Press the action button. If you press it repeatedly, you can take your enemy out with a combo. Not only that, when you're not holding a weapon, you can do a throw move by getting close to your enemy and pressing the weapon button while you hold down the directional button. That does more damage than a punch. If you press the weapon button without holding down the directional button, you can strangle your enemy. You can knock them out for a little while, or if you keep doing it, you can take them out permanently. The choice is up to you, but use it wisely. Snake, when you're in normal mode and you secretly kill an enemy, you can sometimes get items from them. If you use your strangle move or a suppressor on your Sokum, you should be able to take out your enemies without making any noise. If you use your stranglehold effectively, you can take out your enemies without making any noise. Snake, when you're in first-person view mode, you can step to the right by pressing the R1 button, or step to the left by pressing the L1 button. So I can just step out of the shadows and see what's up ahead, huh? Yes, but remember that when you step out of the shadows, you'll be easier to spot. So if you're in danger, let go of the button and get back into the shadows in a hurry, all right? Snake, just to make sure, let's review how to use the codec system. Snake, if you want to send a transmission, first press the select button. That will put you in codec mode. When you're at the codec screen, press the right or left directional button to change the frequency. Then press up on the directional button, or press the circle button to transmit at that frequency. The codec also automatically stores the frequencies of the people you've spoken to. To open the memory window, press down on the directional button at the codec screen. The memory window will show a list of all the frequencies. All you have to do is select the frequency you want and press the circle button to transmit. If you want to switch back to the normal codec mode, just press the select or X button. The O2 gauge is automatically displayed whenever you're underwater or surrounded by gas. It represents one breath. When the O2 gauge reaches zero, your life gauge will begin to go down. Snake, when you enter a narrow space, you'll automatically go into intrusion mode. Press up on the directional button to go forward and down to retreat backwards. You can also press right or left to face either direction. Advance while hiding yourself, pay attention to the enemy's actions, and make sure you're not discovered. But be careful. You can't attack while you're in intrusion mode either. And even if you go into intrusion mode while you're being chased, the enemy's grenades will still follow you. Snake, when you're up against certain walls or obstacles, you can look behind you while you're still hidden. We call that corner view mode. Use it skillfully to see the openings in your enemy's actions and avoid being spotted while advancing. In corner view mode, you can hit the wall to make a noise by pressing the action button. So I can trick the enemy and lure him my way, huh? You're good at tricking people, aren't you? Only beautiful women like yourself. If you're spotted, all the enemies will come to attack you at once. That's alert mode. In that case, there are only two ways to get out of danger. Either kill all the enemies that are coming after you, or escape from them for a certain amount of time. You'll see a timer in the upper right radar portion of the screen. That will tell you how much more time you need to stay out of sight in order to get out of alert mode. If you can escape until the counter reaches zero, the enemies will stop attacking you and you'll enter evasion mode. Don't relax just because you're in evasion mode. The enemies will still be looking for you, so make sure you stay hidden so they can't find you. When the counter in the radar portion of the screen reaches zero again, the enemies will return to their positions. That's when you can breathe a sigh of relief. In any case, the most important thing is not to let the enemy see you. I want you to avoid any unnecessary combat. Snake, crawling is an important way to get through tight, narrow spaces, but you won't be able to attack while you're doing it, so be careful. If you want to stand up, press the crawl button again. If you find an item box, it's a good idea to get close and look at it in first-person view mode. You'll be able to see what's inside. If you grab your enemy in a chokehold, you'll be able to drag him around. That way you can use his body as a human shield. Snake, if you make direct contact with an enemy, you'll take damage. Be careful. What can I do for you, Snake? What is it, Snake? You caught Snake? What's up, Snake? Snake, are you okay? 
Are you hurt, Snake? Is everything all right, Snake? Snake? How can I help, Snake? Snake, just tell me. I'll do anything to help. Snake, how are you holding up? Did you call Snake? Talk to you later, Snake. Good luck, Snake. Be careful, Snake. Come on, Snake. Don't call me for no reason. Don't give up, Snake. Come on, Snake. You can do it. Win, Snake, win. Don't die, Snake. Do it for me, Snake. Please, Snake, don't give up. Come back alive, Snake. Snake, it's all up to you. Don't give up. Don't die. Be careful, Snake. I'm sorry, Snake, but I can't save your mission without a memory card. If you want to save the mission, insert a memory card into a memory card slot. I'm sorry, Snake. It, it looks like there are no empty save blocks. I can't save your mission if they're all full. If you don't format your memory card, I can't save your mission. Don't you want to save your mission? Sorry, Snake. I couldn't save your mission because there was some kind of error. Snake, remember what the Gaul said. The graveyards are full of indispensable men. Snake, you're all alone and surrounded by bad guys. Try to be careful and avoid getting into a fight whenever you can. You're right. Wow, you know all sorts of great quotes, don't you? <laughs> well, both my parents are from Guangdong, China. But I was born and raised in America. I've always liked reading literature from both sides. Kinda keeps me in touch. I'll share some more quotes with you if you like. I'm looking forward to it. But to tell you the truth, I'd like to learn more about you. <laughs> well, I'll think about it. Snake, listen to what Lo Chi said. He who knows that enough is enough will always have enough. Just because you see an item doesn't mean that you always have to get it. If you don't really need it, think twice before you stick your neck out. It might not be worth it. Snake, like Shakespeare said, Nought's had all spent, what our desire is got without content. Basically, it means that your desire can get you into trouble if you're not careful. That goes for items, too. Don't get too greedy or you might be sorry. Be careful, Snake. Snake, in China, they say, you must cross the river before you tell the crocodile he has bad breath. Do you know what that means? It means that the wise man avoids danger first. Use your brain to avoid traps and stay away from the enemy. Snake, have you ever heard the saying, friendly counsel cuts off many foes? It means that a little bit of advice from friends can save you a lot of trouble. You should think about it. If you're in trouble or if you need some information about something, please contact Colonel Campbell or someone else, okay? In my parents' homeland, they say, if there are more wolves, the people are eaten. If there are more people, the wolves are eaten. That means the side with the greater numbers is usually the winner. You're badly outnumbered, Snake. Try not to let them see you. Snake, like Confucius said, the cautious seldom err. If you proceed cautiously, you probably won't make a big mistake. Snake, even after you get used to the mission, don't lose your concentration. In China, they say, rashness brings success to few, misfortune to many. Snake, go forward when it's safe, but retreat when there's danger. You'll just have to play it by ear depending on the circumstances. The Chinese say it is the strong swimmer who most often drowns. It is because the strong swimmer overestimates his abilities and underestimates the strength of the river. You are probably quite used to the mission now, but don't get careless. There's a Chinese proverb, the mind cannot be in two places at once. Make sure that you're not thinking of something else during the mission, okay? Gather ye rosebuds while ye may. Old time is still a-flying, and this same flower that smiles today Tomorrow we'll be dying. Snake laughter is the best medicine. You should be happy you've got enough free time to play a game. Enjoy yourself, okay? In Paradise Lost, Milton wrote, Solitude sometimes is best society, and short retirement urges sweet return. Is that why you came back, Snake? You got tired of your short retirement in Alaska, huh? The proud man does not eat rotting meat, even when hungry, nor steal water from another's well when he thirsts. But, on the other hand, you were forced to steal or find every item you've got, so I guess I shouldn't say that. In China, they say, once the fox gets his nose in, he'll soon find a way to make his body follow. That's a perfect description of you. You can do it, Snake, but you've got to be flexible. Adapt to each situation uniquely. 
He who is firm in will molds the world to himself. Don't forget what you're here to do. You've got to seize any opportunities that present themselves. But I guess I don't have to tell you that, do I? Snake, in China, they say, when walking through a melon patch, don't adjust your sandals. That means that when things get really bad, you have to try to remember what's important. Keep things in the proper perspective, okay? In China, they say, the snake, knowing itself, strikes swiftly. It means that if you have confidence that what you are doing is part of your true nature, there should be no hesitation. I don't know whether your orders are in your true nature or not, but, Snake, believe in yourself. Snake, Leo de Rocher said, Win any way you can. Nice guys finish last. What about you, Snake? Is that what you think? Is there anything that you wouldn't do to stay alive? You should think about that, Snake. Snake, don't give up. Remember Macbeth, Act 5, Scene 3. I'll fight till from my bones my flesh be hacked. Give me my armor. Everyone is counting on you, Snake. You've got to do it. War, he sung, is toil and trouble. Honor but an empty bubble. What about you, Snake? Is your honor just an empty bubble, too? Snake, come what come may. Time and the hour runs through the roughest day. We're almost out of time, Snake. Please hurry. You're the only one who can stop them from launching that nuke. In China, they say, it's better to live ugly than to die beautiful. I think it's true. Once you're dead, you'll never have another chance to be happy. I can't understand people who want to die before their time. Please, Snake, promise me that you'll come back alive. Have you ever heard this one? Confucius said it. Enough proverbs for now. I want to hear about you. The superior man is modest in his speech, but exceeds in his actions. What's that supposed to mean? It means I hardly know you, Snake. It wouldn't be right to start telling you all about my personal life. Okay, but I'm not giving up. How do I love thee? Let me count the ways. Have you ever heard that? It's Elizabeth Barrett Browning. Uh, oh, I don't think too deeply about that one. I'm not sure why I said it. How's it going, Snake? Have you gotten used to using the radar yet? Yeah, it's a great system. Not only can I read the topography, but I can monitor the movement of the bad guys, too. Pretty convenient, huh? It also makes it easy for us to see everything that you're doing. You're watching everything? Of course. If you were my boyfriend, you'd never be able to cheat on me. Being monitored 24 hours a day, that'd be like hell. Don't think of it like that. At least you'd never get lost. Mei Ling, how did you get into this line of work? The truth is, I always wanted to become a fighter pilot. I fell in love with jets watching them in the movies. You'd be surprised how many people say the same thing. But I didn't want to kill people. That's when I heard that the U.S. Air Force needed people to do BDAs, battle damage assessments. Those are the guys whose job it is to confirm how successful a bombing run was. Yeah, so I started to do research into aerial photography and air intelligence. I made it my major. But there are no pilots who only do BDAs. That's right. But by the time I learned that, I was already an expert in my field. Mei Ling, you said that you wanted to become a pilot. Did you take an aptitude test? Well, I've got bad eyes. You probably didn't know it, but I'm wearing contact lenses. So you failed your aptitude tests, huh? Yeah. It's ridiculous. We're not flying around in biplanes anymore, you know? That's right. Today's pilots fly jets that go several times the speed of sound. Exactly. At those speeds, the naked eye isn't that useful. You need sophisticated electronics to see what's really going on. So, is that why you developed your radar system? Yeah. I wanted to develop a radar system that would help soldiers make better, more informed decisions. So your radar shows what's really going on, huh? Mm, it depends on how you interpret it. Like beauty, truth is in the eye of the beholder. You can say that again. Don't forget to save your memories of me, too. You can't save memories even on that system of yours. Memories are fragile things. After you reduce them to binary numbers and send them through the air, they're not memories anymore. I wouldn't be so sure of that. There's nothing my system can't do. Memories aren't just sounds and pictures. They exist somewhere between the sounds, between the pictures. I don't get it. Anything can be done digitally. If that's true, why don't you go ahead and try to say what I'm thinking right now? I can't save that type of thing. You have to put it into words, at least. That's right. And that's what memories are. Wordless. I don't know about that. No matter how far data technology advances, you'll never be able to penetrate the human heart. You're wrong. It's just a matter of time. But first you have to try to understand human emotions, Mei Ling. And how do I do that? 
you have to allow yourself to fall in love with someone. Oh, it is excellent to have a giant strength, but it is tyrannous to use it like a giant. It's not right to use force to get someone to do what they don't want to do. That goes for countries too, don't you think? Where life is more terrible than death, it is then the truest valor to dare to live. Snakes, sometimes living is harder than dying. That's when you really have to be courageous. It must be terrible for you now. Please, please be brave. I know you'll make it. I believe in you. I wish I could send you weapons to this codec instead of just data. That would be nice. I'm starting to feel like a thief already. Ransacking rooms, rifling through fallen enemies' pockets. But you have no choice, Snake. Maybe so, but I think I'm starting to develop kleptomania. I just keep putting things in my pocket. Snake, what does it feel like to fight? Why do you ask? I like to play fighting games. Games? Yeah, fighting games. Since I started this job, I've seen so many people kill each other, but I always sit on a monitor or in burst transmission. Not a very good job, huh? I'm not sure. When you watch it on a monitor, it starts to feel just like a video game. This is no game. There are no start-overs if you make a mistake. I'm sorry. Killing's not fun. It's not pretty either, like it looks in those video games. Okay, Snake, I understand. War's not a game. Listen, Mei Ling. After this operation is over, I want you to go back to being a normal student. You should be having fun playing real video games instead of playing war. Wise men ne'er sit and bewail their loss, but cheerily seek how to redress their harms. Snake, if you're lost and you don't know what to do, you should call Colonel Campbell. He might have a good suggestion for you. This is Nastasha Romanenko. A pleasure to work with you, Solid Snake. You're the nuclear specialist that the Colonel mentioned? That's me. You can ask me anything about nukes that you want. I am also a military analyst, so I have an extensive knowledge of weapon systems as well. They asked me to participate in this operation as a supervisor from the Nuclear Emergency Search Team. I was happy to accept. We must not allow terrorists to get their hands on nuclear weapons of any kind. I hope I can help you to stop them. You're a tough lady. Those terrorists are serious about launching a nuclear weapon? The world cannot stand by idly and allow that to happen, and neither can I. Unfortunately, all I can do from here is provide you with information. Hopefully that'll be enough. Another soldier here wouldn't make a difference anyway. It's good to work with you, Nastasha. Same here, Snake. The nuclear weapons disposal facility on Shiado Moses Island was built at the beginning of this century. It was made only to temporarily store the nuclear warheads. Why? If they wanted to dispose of them, why wouldn't they just dismantle them right away? They cannot do that. You see, when you dismantle a warhead, you still have nuclear materials that must be stored. At this point, all of the nuclear material storage facilities are way past capacity. But they could not stop dismantling weapons while at the same time pushing START 2. So you're telling me that this base was built so they could temporarily avoid being in conflict with START 2? Most people think that we live in a safer world now. But with all the dismantled nuclear weapons and waste around, the threat of nuclear terrorism has increased tremendously. It's ironic, isn't it? After the START II accord was signed on January 3, 1993, Russia and the U.S. reduced their strategic nuclear warheads to between 3,000 and 3,500 warheads each. They completely dismantled all of the ICBMs which contained MIRVs. As a result of that, there are over 15,000 dismantled nuclear warheads waiting to be disposed of. The warheads are supposed to be dismantled at Pantex or some other dismantling facility, but there are limits to how many warheads they can process. We just do not have the capabilities to dismantle all the warheads that are out there. Over 200 tons of plutonium and over 1,000 tons of high-grade uranium have been removed from nuclear weapons so far. And on top of that, nuclear reactors all over the world continue to produce and leak spent nuclear fuel. According to one estimate, as of the year 2005, America alone was storing over 50,000 tons of nuclear material. There is no room left in our nuclear material storage sites. That is why we need nuclear weapon disposal facilities. They were conducting exercises with this new Metal Gear prototype 
Is that what the DARPA chief said? Yeah. What the hell? So you know about Metal Gear? Just rumors. I heard it is some kind of walking tank that can deliver an accurate nuclear strike from any terrain. Mountains, deserts, swamps, wherever. But you are the real expert on Metal Gear, aren't you, Snake? Yeah, I guess I am. But what about the PAL system that the DARPA chief mentioned? It is a device attached to a nuclear weapon system to prevent the missile from being armed or launched. Usually, a secret detonation code or combination is necessary to launch the missile. According to the chief, there are two codes, and the terrorists already know one of them. The other code? If the terrorists find out that one too. Yeah, I've got to hurry and rescue President Baker. PEL stands for Permissive Action Link. It is a safety system attached to nuclear missile systems. The missile cannot be fired without the insertion of a special electronic code. But if the terrorists have found out the detonation codes, they can launch the missiles any time they want. Is it possible to destroy the PAL system so that the missile can be fired even without inserting the detonation code? I do not believe so. It is set up so that the warhead will become automatically inactive if any attempt is made to remove, deactivate, or destroy the PAL. So unless the terrorists either learn the detonation codes or get their hands on the detonation code override keys, there's no way they can launch. Do not be too sure. Any system can contain bugs or malfunctions. We cannot relax yet. I do not know much about Metal Gear. Just the little I have heard. I know it appeared in Outer Heaven in 1995 and then again in Zanzibar in 1999. Both were third world countries led by military regimes. They secretly developed Metal Gear to increase their military and political power throughout the world. But both were stopped by a lone hero. You, Solid Snake. That was a long time ago. All the ICBM silos are closely monitored by military satellites. SLBM-equipped submarines can move secretly, but naturally they are limited to launching from the water. Finally, there are ALBMs, which can be launched from aircraft. They allow for excellent mobility, but they are somewhat unreliable. Metal Gear was developed to solve all those problems. It can move freely over any terrain and independently launch a nuclear missile at any target in the world. It completely changes the nature of the strategic arms race and destroys the delicate nuclear balance. It is a weapon to be feared, believe me. The development of Metal Gear is a cynical attempt to consolidate and increase our military dominance while at the same time maintaining the pretense of disarming ourselves. Now that the SLCM-0 option allowing for the sneak inspections of submarines in international waters has been concluded, the value of submarines as strategic weapons has been greatly diminished. With Metal Gear, governments of the world will be able to avoid this type of inspection and at the same time stay in compliance with international nuclear treaties. It is just like Baker said, we are facing increasing danger from stored nuclear materials. You see, there are three elements necessary in the manufacture of nuclear weapons. Nuclear materials, nuclear engineers, and manufacturing technology. All three of them can easily be acquired by either legal or illegal means, if you have enough money, that is. They say that there are 500,000 nuclear engineers in the world. But after the end of the Cold War, the demand for nuclear engineers dropped precipitously. In the Eastern Bloc countries in particular, there is a tremendous brain drain. They cannot keep their scientists in the country, and each year, more and more nuclear engineers go to work for the highest bidder. Just like Baker said, each year, there are more and more cases of muff coming from the nuclear material storage facilities. That stands for material unaccounted for. It means that someone is stealing nuclear materials and probably selling them on the black market. After the fall of the Soviet Union, the nuclear management program fell to pieces. In the late 1990s, there were rumors that nearly a hundred suitcase-sized nuclear bombs mysteriously disappeared from the Soviet arsenal. We still do not know whether it is true or not, but it is possible that they fell into the hands of terrorists. 
It looks like the DARPA chief and the arms tech president both agree on the concept of maintaining a dominant nuclear arsenal. They are big on the nuclear deterrent theory. The idea behind a nuclear standoff is that both countries would be too afraid to use a nuclear weapon for fear of a nuclear reprisal. In other words, the only thing preventing a country from totally devastating another country with nuclear weapons is the fear of a nuclear counterstrike. Those two probably feel that Metal Gear will further promote that security. The right-wingers believe that as long as any country has nuclear weapons, they must have them as well. That is why they will never be in favor of the total elimination of nuclear weapons. And with each new country that acquires nuclear capabilities, the need for maintaining the counter-strike threat increases. As long as the nuclear deterrent policy continues, we will never be rid of nuclear weapons. The theory of nuclear deterrence was born during the Cold War at a time of great suspicion between the U.S. and the USSR. The great gulf between the ideologies of East and West caused a dramatic escalation in the arms race. And this escalation of the arms race in turn fueled mutual distrust and fear between the world's two great superpowers. The last half of the 20th century was shaped by the policy of nuclear deterrence. But the world has changed. The Cold War has ended. And we are now living in a world where small regional conflicts are breaking out all over. Things are not so simple anymore. And the policy of nuclear deterrence is obsolete. Most of these regional conflicts are the result of age-old enmities between different ethnic groups and religions. In those cases, the hatred often runs so deep that rationality is thrown out the window. For people such as them, the fear of a counter-strike often means little. And that is why the nuclear deterrence policy has lost much of its efficacy. A nuclear standoff is not a sufficient deterrent in the current world climate. Naturally, nuclear weapons contain plutonium. Most of the radiation emitted by plutonium isotopes consists of alpha rays. The ionization effects are strong, but if they are kept in containers, there is no danger of exposure. But if plutonium enters the body through breathing or other contact, it is quickly absorbed into the bones and internal organs. After that, there is no way to remove it. Once that happens, the victim will be constantly exposed to it, and just one one millionth of a gram of plutonium can cause cancer. That is why a plutonium leak is such a serious danger. Make sure you do not use your gun anywhere near there. Scientists are currently using gene therapy to try and create a microorganism capable of breaking down plutonium, but they have not yet had any success. The plutonium version of bioremediation, huh? Instead of processing, what about reusing it? I thought that they were working on using dismantled plutonium for civilian applications. For a time, it looked like there was going to be international cooperation for that, but unfortunately, there was too much mutual suspicion and it all fell apart. The signing of START was a step in the right direction, but it created a flood of dismantled plutonium. Disposing of that plutonium safely is now the biggest challenge facing the world. Combustion in nuclear reactors, vitrification processing, lots of suggestions have been made, but in reality, no effective solutions have been found. Otacon said that now it's possible to design and test new types of nuclear weapons in a virtual simulation without ever exploding a nuclear device. Is that true? Yes, it is true. Since the establishment of DART and NEEF early in the 21st century, there has been a wealth of data concerning nuclear fission and fusion. There is also much data accumulated from the nuclear tests conducted over the last four decades. With the processing speed of today's supercomputers, they can design a new nuclear weapon through virtual reality computer simulations. In order to collect data for the simulation experiments, they are doing subcritical tests underground. Those are experiments in which they detonate high explosives in proximity to plutonium without setting off a critical chain reaction. They then measure the effect that the shockwave has on the plutonium. By measuring the particles which fly off the surface of the plutonium, they can learn the mass, speed, and distribution of the plutonium particles. 
The politicians insist that whether it is above ground or below ground, a nuclear test which does not cause a nuclear explosion is not a nuclear test and therefore does not violate the CTBT. A lot of people do not agree with that interpretation. The first subcritical test was performed on July 2, 1997, at the Nevada Nuclear Testing Facility. After that, subcritical testing became extremely common, not only in America, but in Russia countries too. They say that the reason for the tests is to ensure the safety and reliability of the existing nuclear stockpile, but that is nothing more than a flimsy cover story. In reality, the danger of a nuclear weapon exploding accidentally decreases over time. It is clear that the real reason for these tests is to aid in the development of new types of nuclear weapons. Even the government admits that the data collected from those tests is used in virtual reality simulation tests. That is amazing. Dr. Emmerich's father participated in the Manhattan Project? That was the secret World War II project responsible for the creation of the first atomic bomb. It had a huge budget, something like $2 billion. They brought in 120,000 of the best and brightest scientists and engineers to work on it. And we all know how that story ended. In July of 1945, they exploded the first nuclear device at Trinity, followed shortly after by Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Trinity. The world was changed forever that day. Scientists and researchers could no longer pretend that their hands were clean of blood. Afterwards, the leader of the Manhattan Project, J. Robert Oppenheimer, said, The physicists have known sin, and this is a knowledge which they cannot lose. When Dr. Emmerich designed the new Metal Gear prototype, he thought he was creating a mobile TMD system. He is a very naive man. TMD stands for Theater Missile Defense. They represent a shift in defense priorities from dealing with the threat of ICBMs from the former Soviet Union to dealing with small-scale regional conflicts in the Third World. Current TMD systems work by a combination of THAADS, Theater High Altitude Air Defense, which intercept missiles outside of the atmosphere, and Patriot-type missiles, which intercept missiles within the atmosphere. Dr. Emmerich was planning on them using Metal Gear as a low-atmosphere, mobile, missile interceptor unit. There are many in Russia, as well as America, who are opposed to TMD systems because they say that it undermines the spirit of the ABM, the Anti-Ballistic Missile Treaty. And there are also those who say that the ABM Treaty is a dinosaur left over from the Cold War. They argue that the strategy of MAD should be maintained by limiting missile defense systems. There was a big debate over it, but ultimately, under pressure from the defense industry, who was looking to expand into new markets, TMD systems were accepted as an integral part of a modern military arsenal. So... The terrorists intentionally set their deadline to coincide with the signing of the START III Accord. According to the terms of START III, both Russia and the U.S. are to reduce the number of their nuclear warheads in deployment to between 2,000 and 2,500 missiles. The current president has not yet had any major foreign policy successes. His term will be up soon, and the word at the White House is that he desperately wants this one for the history books. Typical politician. It is a big concern for him and his supporters. The signing of the START III was dependent on ratification of the START II, but MIRVs were the most important weapon in Russian arsenal. Naturally, the conservatives in the Russian parliament were greatly opposed to disarming them. The expansion of NATO, along with tension caused by disagreements over the application of the ABM Treaty with regards to TMD systems, made ratification in the 1990s difficult. It took a tremendous amount of pressure and secret negotiations to get the Russians to sign the START III tomorrow. But the political situation in Russia is tenuous at best, and one small incident could bring the signing to a crashing halt. If the Russians learn that America has secretly developed a new type of nuclear weapon, there is no telling how they might react. 
World opinion will be strongly against us, too. That liquid snake is a smart one. He knows the political climate. His actions were obviously very well calculated. It is true that the signing of START 3 would mean a reduction in nuclear missiles, but it would still leave between 4,000 to 5,000 missiles between the U.S. and Russia alone. That is more than enough to destroy every living thing on this planet several times over. There is a big difference between nuclear reduction and nuclear elimination. Negotiations for START 3 began in the late 1990s. The Russian president had actually been pushing for a much more ambitious arms reduction pact, but it was rejected by the Americans. America was the sole remaining superpower on the Earth, and they were not too eager to give up the title. The fact is, in the history of the world, no dominant power has ever willingly given up the reins of that power. In the case of the U.S., that means nuclear superiority. There has been a lot of effort to reduce the number of strategic nuclear weapons, but even today, there is no treaty limiting tactical nuclear weapons. It may look from the outside that the world is disarming, but in fact, nuclear weapons are not going anywhere soon. The nuclear age is not over yet. As long as one country in the world has nuclear weapons, they will never go away. If we do not drastically reduce the number of stockpiled nuclear weapons, it is going to become easier and easier for terrorists to get their hands on them. That means more terrorist attacks like this one. There was some talk about both sides reducing their nuclear stockpiles to a core deterrent force of less than 500 missiles each and declaring that there would be no nuclear counterstrike in the event of the use of conventional or chemical weapons, but talks fell through. It seems that America is unwilling to relinquish its position as the most powerful country in the world. There is no doubt about it. After the Cold War ended, the chance of a full-scale, worldwide nuclear conflagration was diminished. But on the other hand, the chances of local tactical use of nuclear weapons greatly increased. Civil wars, revolutions, regional disputes. It seems like there is a new war popping up somewhere every day. And many of them are the result of centuries-old hatred between different ethnic or religious groups. These people do not think rashly or logically. In such conflicts, there is no concern for the high civilian casualty rate, and international criticism means little. A nuclear deterrent is meaningless because emotions run so hot. Furthermore, unlike strategic nuclear missiles, the decision to use tactical nuclear missiles is in some cases left up to battlefield commanders. It is pretty scary. As long as nuclear weapons continue to proliferate, the chances that someone is going to use them will also continue to grow. Ironically, the policy of nuclear deterrence has prevented the elimination of nuclear weapons. The entire basis for determining them to be illegal has been undermined by this military policy. In other words, nuclear weapons cannot be declared illegal because we have an entrenched policy which makes them legal ipso facto. America and Russia are not the only countries with nuclear weapons. During the Cold War, the UK, France, and China publicly declared the existence of their own nuclear arsenals. Since we entered the 21st century, we have confirmed the existence of nuclear weapons programs in countries throughout Africa, the Middle East, South America, and Asia. Nukes are steadily proliferating. The 21st century is paying for the 20th century's failure to plug the holes in the NPT and for the IAEA's failure to tighten nuclear control measures. The IAEA was established in 1957 to oversee peaceful as well as military applications of atomic power. But the IAEA can only investigate those countries which request an investigation. Furthermore, the timing of the inspection must be approved by the country in question. They are not allowed to do sneak inspections. The country that is being investigated can even dictate the nationality of the inspectors that they will allow in. In the late 1970s, Iraq would only allow inspectors from Bulgaria and Russia to enter the country. 
the IAEA does not even have the authority to level fines against countries who have committed infractions. After the Gulf War, they discovered that Iraq had been developing nuclear weapons in secret right under the investigators' noses. Unfortunately, as an organization, the IAEA just did not have the teeth to effectively stop the proliferation of nuclear weapons and technology. In 1970, all five nuclear powers, America, the Soviet Union, France, England, and China, signed the NPT. The treaty provided that the non-nuclear-equipped countries could receive assistance for peaceful applications of nuclear power. But military applications of nuclear power were strictly prohibited, and the IAEA was given the responsibility of investigating countries who were suspected of being in non-compliance with the NPT. But the IAEA could not stop the proliferation of nuclear weapons either. Not only couldn't the IAEA levy any penalties against violating nations, but it became impossible to distinguish between technologies which would lead to military development and technologies which were for civilian applications. That stuff that is flowing in those ditches on the first floor must be radioactive nuclear wastewater. You better stay away from it. You are already exposed enough just by being in that area. Any further exposure could be fatal. That place does not have a nuclear processing facility. It must be some other kind of nuclear material that is leaking, besides the dismantled nuclear warheads. Probably spent nuclear fuel or something. Any time fuel is burned in a nuclear reactor, it will always produce, as a waste product, some spent fuel mixed with highly toxic radioactive compounds. Spent nuclear fuel stays radioactive for 300 years. In other words, this material will remain lethal for the next three centuries. There was a time when we thought it was safe to seal nuclear waste in special containers and bury it in a layer of rock salt without much exposure to underground water. Even though we now know there are big problems with that, we still do not have an effective disposal solution. Most of the nuclear waste we produce is just shoved underground with no intention of ever processing it. It is like an ostrich with its head in the sand, no? There is a process which involves mixing the nuclear waste with low-grade uranium to convert it into a mixed oxide fuel for burning in light water reactors, usually in the form of glass logs. But MOX contaminates a nuclear reactor more quickly than low-grade uranium. It is also highly toxic. It is economically unfeasible unless the price of uranium is more than four times what it currently is. Not only that, you cannot ignore the danger inherent in transporting the MOX from the processing factories to the nuclear reactors. An accident could lead to radioactive contamination or the materials could be hijacked by terrorists. No, I do not think MOX could be called a viable solution to the problem of plutonium disposal. There is only one effective use for nuclear waste. Military applications. You see, after chemical reprocessing, they can separate plutonium from the nuclear waste. Nuclear weapons normally use military-grade plutonium-239 with a purity of 93 to 94%. It is made in special nuclear reactors designed for military applications. On the other hand, the plutonium in spent nuclear fuel only has a purity of about 60%. But that does not mean that spent nuclear fuel cannot be used for military applications. America has been successful in tests using weapons made from nuclear reactor-grade plutonium. That means that eventually everyone will be able to make nuclear weapons from plutonium separated from spent nuclear fuel. Spent nuclear fuel can also be used to make depleted uranium bullets or shells. They are armor-piercing anti-tank rounds. DU is two and a half times denser than steel and 50% denser than lead, so it makes it an extremely effective armor-piercing weapon. It can cut through tank armor like a hot knife through butter. Unfortunately, when a DU round explodes, it spreads a fine dust which, when absorbed into a body, supposedly causes terrible long-term health problems, including genetic damage. During the Gulf War, 
American as well as Iraqi soldiers were exposed to DU dust and suffered from radiation poisoning and other illnesses. The American government conducted research to discover whether exposure could lead to cancer or genetic damage, but the results were inconclusive. Some people think that this type of radioactive contamination is what is behind the Gulf War syndrome, but the government will not admit it. They are currently doing research to find ways to transform minor actinoids, such as americium and neptunium, which are highly toxic with long half-lives into nuclear materials with short half-lives. It is called extinction processing, but it is not being used much due to all the technical and economical problems with it. A serious program for nuclear waste treatment has yet to be established. There is a big difference between conventional weapons and weapons of mass destruction. Conventional weapons are intended for use against military targets, but nuclear weapons are used against non-combatants. Nukes are designed to kill tens of thousands of innocent civilians in a flash. That is why nuclear weapons are so evil. Those who forget the past are doomed to repeat it. That is why the world must never forget Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Nuclear weapons are destructive enough to kill every living thing on Earth and to render the planet uninhabitable for tens of thousands of years. In the history of mankind, there has never been a weapon created which was not later used. If we do not do something, we are just going to blow ourselves up. There's no doubt about it. As long as nuclear weapons exist, we have the Sword of Damocles hanging over our heads. It is so ironic. People are working as slaves to pay for weapons that must never be used. Weapons that target the people themselves. It is madness. In the 20th century, in order to be a military superpower, you had to first be an economic superpower. But things changed toward the end of the century, after the collapse of communism. With all the surplus weapons and technology floating around, even economically weak countries could have a powerful military. Russia could no longer pay enough money to its leading scientists, so they sold their weapons and weapons technology to the highest bidders. NBC weapons flowed into the hands of dictators and terrorists. The military balance of the world crumbled. The world has never seen the balance of power shift so quickly and dramatically. According to the military doctrine, which is the basis for NATO expansion, a preemptive nuclear strike may be undertaken if there is a sufficient threat of a regional conflict spreading to a large-scale war. In the face of all this NATO expansion, Russia might feel the need to flex their nuclear muscles, if only to show NATO that even with their aging arsenal and diminished army, they are still a major power. As long as the strategy of nuclear deterrence continues, nuclear weapons may be reduced, but they will never be eliminated. If you think about it, nuclear reduction does not mean much without elimination as the ultimate goal. I used to work in the DIA. I figured the only way to achieve nuclear elimination was to work from the inside to convince them of the ineffectiveness of the deterrence theory. Seems like you're pretty focused on that issue. Victims of nuclear radiation are a sad thing to see, and I have seen a lot of it. I have seen more than enough of it. I was born and raised in Pripyat, Ukraine. I was 10 years old on that day. April 26th, 1986. You don't mean... Yes, Chernobyl. That is the day that changed my life and thousands of other lives. I live just three kilometers north of there. 600,000 to 700,000 people were evacuated. Over 650,000 children suffered the effects of radiation poisoning. Between 1986 in 1993, 12,000 children died. My parents and many others like them who helped in the cleanup died a few years later from radiation sickness. We must rid this world of all nuclear weapons before they cause more misery, before they destroy the delicate environment that keeps us alive. 
I will not allow this pain and anxiety to pass on to yet another generation. Harusho. Good. You found a SOCOM. That's a Special Operations Command pistol. It's a 45 caliber pistol with plenty of stopping power. It's also equipped with a LAM for nighttime combat. If you hold down the weapon button, you can train the laser sight on the enemy to help you aim. If you find a SOCOM suppressor, you can equip that too. That pistol was designed specifically for use by special forces, so I think it will be useful. Some people find it a little heavy and hard to use, but it shouldn't be a problem for you. Good. You found a suppressor for the SOCOM pistol. If you equip that, you won't have to worry about being noticed by the enemy when you fire. It will greatly reduce the sound and flash from your muzzle. It uses a multi-layered chamber to lower the velocity of the gas emissions and thus reduce the sound and flash when you fire your weapon. The suppressor is narrow enough so that you can still use the gun's original sight even when it is equipped. It shouldn't change the feel when you fire it. That is a FAMAS. It is a bullpup-style assault rifle. It is durable and easy to use. Very resistant to overheating, it is a reliable weapon with smooth action. It can fire up to 1,000 rounds per minute. On full auto, you will empty a 25-round magazine in a few seconds. Excellent. That is a PSG-1, one of the best sniper rifles in the world. It is accurate enough to shoot cleanly through a 2.5 centimeter square from a distance of 100 meters. Unlike other sniper rifles, the PSG-1 is not bolt action. It is semi-automatic. Its best feature is that it allows for rapid fire. When you are shooting over long distances, the slightest tremble can make you miss your target by inches. Try to keep your hands as still as possible. Those are remote-controlled miniature reconnaissance missiles, sometimes called Nikita missiles. They've got CCD cameras in their nose cones. After you fire them, they'll transmit their visual data to your monitor. You can control their flight freely in all directions. But the missiles have a limited amount of fuel. Watch the gauge carefully. Press the first person view button to see the missile's visual data. Use them wisely. You found some grenades. Just pull the pin and it explodes after five seconds. You can get a lot done during those five seconds, Snake. How you use them is up to you. Those are stun grenades. They are often used in sensitive operations such as freeing hostages and that sort of thing. Sometimes they are called flash bangs or sound and flash grenades. They make a big flash and lots of noise, which will disorient and disable your opponents temporarily. You have to understand that they won't kill the bad guys, but just stun them for a few seconds. Use them wisely. That's a chaff grenade. It's a special grenade that disperses thin, narrow metallic strips of various lengths and frequency responses. It can confuse electronic equipment. It will be useful against machines which depend upon electronic sensors. Naturally, for it to be effective, you must use it before you are attacked. If you are expecting an attack, spread the chaff beforehand. That is C4 explosive, a plastic explosive with a texture similar to clay, so you can shape it in almost any way you want. Although it has 1.4 times the destructive power of dynamite, it is highly stable and won't explode without a detonating device, even if it is shot, burned, or beaten. You are using a wireless detonator, yes? The detonator is equipped with a scrambler, so you don't have to worry about interference from any other radio source. Make sure you are sufficiently far enough away when it goes off. Also, as you know, the sound of the explosive will alert your enemies, so be careful. Those are claymore mines. Unlike other mines, which are planted underground, claymores are set up above ground and are designed to produce maximum damage in a wide fan-shaped area. When they go off, they spray 700 1.2 millimeter steel pellets in a 60-degree pattern, much like an oversized shotgun. 
Traditionally, claymores use a tripwire to set them off, but those claymores are a new type. They are camouflaged using the new stealth technology and are equipped with sophisticated motion detectors. Cold medicine? I don't know. It looks like regular old cold medicine to me. A tranquilizer, yes. I heard that Sniper Wolf uses them to prevent her hands from quivering. Maybe you should try the same thing. That is a mind detector. It works by searching for metal objects. It will even find claymores that are hidden with optic stealth technology. It is set so that the position of the landmines will show up on your radar. All you have to do is equip the mine detector and keep an eye on your radar. Use it carefully. You got a gas mask. Good. That is a double eyepiece type. Be careful. Unlike the transparent shield type, it will restrict your field of vision. It is equipped with a voice emitter, so do not worry about not being heard. The outside is made of reinforced plastic and the inside is made from an acetate weave. Also, the eyepieces are specially treated so they won't fog up. You will be able to stay in a gas field area for a long time with that mask. Use it wisely. Those are night vision goggles. They do not use special lenses. They electronically amplify the light by transforming it into electric signals, which they then boost to create an image. They amplify the light 100,000 times. You will be able to see 500 meters by starlight just as if it was day. But it won't work in complete darkness since there is no light to amplify. Those night vision goggles will make your eyes hurt after a while. Do not use them for too long a period of time. A thermal goggles work by thermal imaging instead of by amplifying light like the night vision goggles. They'll work just as well in complete darkness. Not only that, they can also penetrate optic stealth systems. You will be able to spot claymores too. But they will tire your eyes out, so do not use them too much. You found body armor. It will lower the damage you take from gunfire. It is designed to prevent bullets from penetrating, but you will still feel the impact from the bullets. Don't rely on it too much. Rope? If it is at least 12 millimeters thick, lightweight, and hard to cut, you should be able to repel with it as well. It is not a hemp rope, is it? No, it looks like it's made of nylon fibers. Good. When hemp rope gets wet, it loses its flexibility. It would not be good for repelling, but that rope sounds like it will not be a problem. Sound travels better in cold environments. If you're going to use a handgun, you should equip a suppressor. When the temperature falls down to minus 30 or minus 40 degrees Celsius, you start to get ice fogs. That's when the moisture in the air freezes. It may look pretty at first, but it'll severely limit your visibility. Be careful. Kipling, an English poet who also won the Nobel Prize, said that once you go beyond 65 degrees north, you're beyond the reach of divine protection and human law. To survive in such surroundings, you have to be strong enough to not rely on God or anyone else. In cold like this, over 70% of your body's warmth is lost through your head. Put on some kind of hat. I hate hats. Is a bandana okay? Well, I guess it's better than nothing. In an arctic environment, it's important to change your underwear if you're sweating a lot. Doddle around too much, and you'll not only waste your strength, but you could even catch pneumonia. Gaming after a bath should be avoided. It's easy to dehydrate in sub-zero climates, so make sure to replenish your fluids. But don't ever try to do it by eating snow. You'll freeze your stomach, and your body temperature will drop. Always melt the snow, and then boil it before you drink it. No cold foods or cold liquids for you. That stuff causes a temperature imbalance that actually drains your body of energy. A golden rule in Arctic environments. Don't suddenly look into the dark. Look slowly from a light area to a darker area. If you do that, your eyes will gradually adjust, and you'll be able to see better in the dark. Try not to play in the dark either. When you're fighting in the dark, you need to use your sense of hearing and smell. Don't trust your eyes. 
Use your ears. Feel the flow of the air with your whole body. That's the way to tell where your enemy is. People sometimes panic in the dark. Try to stay cool. When you're wearing night vision goggles, the light gets amplified a hundredfold. So if you look at an explosion or a stun grenade, you may burn your retinas. If that happens, it'll take a little while until your vision returns. Snake, you've got to think. Your mind is your most dangerous weapon. If things are getting too complicated, try to simplify your thoughts. You can also try calling Campbell for advice. Soldiers that have been forged in the fires of battle are used to catching naps whenever and wherever they can. There's a big difference between real soldiers and those kids who have only been trained in VR simulators. After playing for a long time, you should get some rest too. People's reaction speed is slowest around 3 o'clock in the morning, and so is their judgment. If you're feeling drowsy, you should get some sleep. It's also important to be able to control your bodily functions. You never know when a long demo is about to begin. So make sure you're prepared to sit in front of the monitor for a long time if necessary. It's never a good idea to fight on too full a stomach. It'll make you logy, maybe even sleepy. You should wait 30 minutes after eating before you play. Where I come from, a soldier who loses his head in combat is called a target. Military sea rations place an emphasis on calories. That's why it's best to use them along with some other type of nutritional supplement, such as vitamins or minerals. People who have been through war and survived develop a kind of sixth sense to warn them of danger. Trust your instincts as a soldier, as a gamer. In war, a split second can mean the difference between victory and defeat. Don't ever hesitate. The slower you react, the greater the chance that you'll be beaten. That inner voice that warns you when danger is nearby, you can't learn that in training. You've got to have survived a few firefights, seen a few friends blown away, before you learn that trick. When you're trying to hide, avoid places that look like the enemy might search. Think about how your enemy is going to move, and then sneak in there. It doesn't matter how smart you are, just use your head out there. Snake, divide and conquer. Try to take your enemies on one at a time. You need to make snap decisions. In war, the difference between living and dying is counted in milliseconds. The basic law of CQB is to take your enemy out as quickly and efficiently as possible while maintaining your own escape route. Don't use your gun unless you need to. If you can get out of a jam using just your hands and feet, then do it. If you can't, then go for the gun. Soldiers who lose their heads on the battlefield usually lose their heads on the battlefield. Get my meaning? Always have your next action planned. Think carefully about your hiding spots. You may find a place where you can hide perfectly, but if you can't get your mission done, it's meaningless. Always use the most appropriate weapon for the situation. If you use a weapon that's not really doing the job, not only are you wasting ammo, but you're also putting your life in danger. One way of letting yourself know when to change a magazine is to make the last few rounds of the mag tracers. Plan your strategy based on the enemy's positions. Try to think like the enemy commander would think. If you can put yourself in the map designer's mind, a lot of doors will open for you. Once you give up hope, it's all over. That's when you can't do anything right. Despair leads to death, you know. You've got to believe. If you believe with your whole heart, you will succeed. Sometimes in combat, or when you're near the end of your rope, you can see things that normally aren't there, or shouldn't be there. Relax. It's not a bug. It's just the mysteries of the human mind. Think about something terrible that happened in your life. Everyone has had something bad happen to them. It'll help take your mind off of the misery of the battlefield. A real master of warfare alters his strategy to cope with changes in the battlefield conditions. If you always follow the book, you'll be transparent to your enemy. War brings out the cruelty of man. No matter how the soldier was brought up, they all turn into animals when they're thrust into the heat of combat. 
Sometimes, even though you know it's a losing battle, you just have to fight or be damned. A narrow chance is still a chance. Foresight is important in war. In times of extreme danger, people's latent sixth sense often awakens. When that happens, throw logic to the wind and trust your instincts. The only way to conquer fear is to stare it straight in the face and laugh at it. Never let fear control you. Don't feel guilty about the soldiers that died from your bullets. They knew the risks they were taking, just like you. The weather in Alaska is very hard to predict. It can change on a dime. A lot of people say it's the worst weather in the world. Naturally, in an enclosed room, your motion is limited. But that doesn't mean that you should stand still and become a human target. You can win if you watch how your enemy moves and then cleverly counter it.